So how many quarters has the eighth grade team played? They have played less than four quarters. And they've They're, scored they played three points? and a half quarters. And how they many scored points? zero points. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to episode 89. Cheers. Jesus. That was loud. <laughs> Crown Royal Whiskey Cola Purple Can tonight. Haven't had that one yet. Step Brothers Water. <laughs> High Noon Pineapple. Ah, the best flavor. Uh, one of the best flavors. Is it Very the best? Good. I enjoy it. I think it's the best. If you think black cherry is the best, then you no. need to get out. I like Agreed. watermelon. Watermelon is up there, I think. Welcome in to the number one sports podcast in the state of Michigan. It is Wednesday, my dudes. Wednesday, <laughs> my dudes. Uh. September 21st, 8 10 p.m. Happy anniversary, Ryan and Michelle. Oh, that's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Love is I love. I liked that on Facebook today. And besides that, and the debate is over, guys. Jared Goff is better than Carson Wentz. How many years has he been in the league? What? This is what? They came five? You're six? Pick one, pick two, Evan. They came in together. Yeah, what year was that? They've oh. been on a billion different teams. Carson's been on a lot of teams. Jared's only been on two. Well, St. Louis Rams. Three. Three. <laughs> what are we going to talk about today? Um, I don't know. Maybe some weekly check-ins. Some, well, breaking news. We're going to talk about the Detroit Tigers today for a little bit. Ugh. Because they... Made a move, a big move. Alex is giving a thumbs down. Um, I'm gonna spin this on so hard. Just you, just wait. Okay, I can't wait. Look, the good tease, Evan. This is like a radio segment. Then we will talk about the Lions and Commanders, Michigan State, Washington, Michigan, UConn, as our recaps. Then we're gonna preview Michigan, Maryland, Michigan State, Minnesota, Lions, Vikings, and. Mixed in and all that will be listener questions that pertain to each of those categories, which I try to color code in the show doc. That's I also why have it's written out here. I thought you were just feeling so, extra saucy. There's a method to the madness, um, but it is week number one of trying that. So we'll see how it goes. But let's start with weekly recaps. Let's let Alex go last because he's stuffing his face right now on the one to 250 pounds. <laughs> um, we will let... Who, Evan, me or you? Your choice. Okay, I'll get mine out of the way. Nice. Because right, I'm more excited to hear yours. Let's see. This weekend was the first full football Sunday I've had in a long, long time. I didn't stop and think about the last time I really sat down and watched not like a non-playoff week, regular season, red zone experience. I want to give a hats off to you guys. I don't know how you guys do it every week. I was exhausted. I was drained. Um, my fingers were sore from typing in the group chats as much as I did, which I guess is an optional thing. But it felt mm. like I had to do it. Like you have to talk about what's going on. You have to talk about fantasy football. Um, just refreshing the streams when they die. Stroud's a stream east, one of the best operations in our entire country. Um, the momentum swings of... This weekend was even crazier with all the comebacks. I, I really don't know how you guys do it. It's it's impressive. Just a just a, another another job. You put in the eight hour shift. You gotta it, go to work on Sundays. Except it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's super enjoyable the entire time. It is. My hardest thing was I was trying to get that perfect comfortable position on the couch because then my back started to tighten up. And I was like, oh, man, this doesn't feel good. Like, maybe I need to stand up for a little bit, knock out some push-ups in between, like, commercial breaks just to feel like I'm not just completely you gotta move lazy. You got to a lot. A lot. You <laughs> got to change locations in, in the house or apartment. Sometimes you lay down. I usually do. Yeah. 
So bedroom, living room, you got to try out all the new spots. Definitely things to keep in mind moving forward. Um, next on my list that I wanted to get to was a shameless plug, a free ad of a product I just tried. So, uh, I tried it earlier when I, between when I got home and when we got on this podcast. Evan's familiar with them. Dude wipes. Yes. But not any kind of dude wipes. Oh, Mitchell, that'll give you a nice little that'll give Man. you a nice little kick down below. Chill. I have those in my bathroom as well. You will feel those after you use them. I and like af- them. And after one test run, wow. Really felt good. It Minty. just felt refreshing. It felt like there's not gonna be much irritation. Um because I believe they rub them with mint, eucalyptus, and tea tree essential oils. And let me tell you, you I feel felt the it. oils. <laughs> you feel it. Felt smooth and felt good. So I'm looking forward to using those. I have a three pack of them. So just if you see me out in public, just know I'm feeling fresh. <laughs> um, next, <laughs> Bryson DeChambeau. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you guys, <Such> a- <laughs> I, I was still watching this video last night before I went to bed. Still? I would just put it on my phone and just laugh in my bed for like five minutes to myself. My neighbors probably think I'm going insane, but this is probably the funniest video I've seen this year. I mean, I have it down to a science of like the minute he hits the rope and he's just like, oh, guys. <laughs> yeah, he's a loser. He's a, it's a, it's a loser. soccer flop. Worse than a soccer like. Are you fake okay? Injury. No. <laughs> I mean, might be the biggest loser of all time. I can't see on my right eye. Oh. <laughs> he walks straight into it like a dummy. It's it entirely his fault. His whole brand is just being a big tough guy, like long drive on tour. And he just gets absolutely taken out by a rope. But I will say the one relatable thing is like, when you really embarrass yourself in public, your brain does try to think of how you can blame someone else for why something just happened to you. <laughs> but the way he did it in his like high pitched voice was one of the funniest things I've seen. Uh, I can't get enough of it. I don't know when I'm gonna not find that video funny, but I always, I think I always will. It is pretty funny. <sighs> but he's an absolute loser. If I didn't like him before, I don't like him now. I mean, w- I way less. Guy's an absolute loser. <laughs> um, I think we can spend. That's that's really the main things I had. So since mine's usually lighter, um, what if we get into the Game of Thrones part of the weekly recap real quick? Oh, spoiler uh, alert! Um, we do have an avid listener that can't watch Game of Thrones for now eight days. Um, so, so no spoiler recap. Spoiler alerts! Spoiler alerts! Right now! Spoiler, spoiler alerts! Skip ahead! Skip spoiler. ahead! Skip ahead! Skip. <laughs> House of Dragon, House of Dragon. Well, I'll start for episode four because you guys have seen it and I hadn't seen it. Um, and then I'll let you guys kick it to you guys for episode five thoughts. But Bonk. The Bonk episode, you guys really oversold it. It was disgusting and I <laughs> could not have been like less turned on from that episode. I was disgusted. It was super uncomfortable. I mean, that's what I was trying to get at because you're such a weird guy. I thought you'd be into it. No, no, that was gross. Oh, damn. Well, I haven't liked it, so. Like, there's only one of the different things that happened relating to that. The last one, maybe, like, okay, fine. But all the ones leading up was like, I want to throw up. <laughs> I felt gross. sick. <laughs> it's pretty gross. I forgot about his back. It was disgusting. <laughs> and then they did. And then, yeah, it was anticlimactic. But I think you, you knew the buildup based off of, like, the... How sh- her character is getting portrayed recently. Um, so you knew it was. Are yeah. we still talking about the bonk? Or are we yeah, talking about the bonk? We're, we're, we're in episode four, okay. but the bonk of of Varys and how anticlimactic it could have been. You had to stare at an old dude's back the entire time instead of. Episode you five. Get nice angles in there. What did you guys take away from this past week? <clears throat> I thought it was a very good episode. You always it. do. You're the worst. See, you thought it sucked. <laughs> um, 
All right. Just so I just want to, before you continue, to all the listeners that have reached out that said Grant is the worst at talking about this, I apologize right now for what Grant's about to say. I'm sure it's, it's going to be bad. Just just mute it. Skip it. Sorry. This is, this is just for, to appease Brad. This is multiple people have reached out about your knowledge. Wow. So, please. Well, carry one. on. No, Evan, you go first. I enjoyed the episode. Oh, um, say something mean to Evan, Grant. After I, I enjoyed. The I haven't even said I disliked the episode. I didn't say that. You said when of the course episode I liked finished. It. You always the first, do- first words that came out of my mouth was like, "That's how they end. That's how this episode's going to end." No little little cliffhanger until you saw like the preview for the next episode. I was like, "Okay, this isn't a cliffhanger. We already know what's going to happen." Um, but I was shocked how fast that episode went by. I think it was very well done. Um, it's another wedding episode, so you knew if you go back Game of Thrones, every wedding in that Game of Thrones, there's something bad happens. I know all about that. See, Alex, he knows all about that. All yeah, the weddings. I know a lot about YouTube. I'm not sure if Alex knew that weddings equal bad things. But yeah, I had knew. had no idea. I mean, we're halfway the through craziest we're halfway through moments the of the whole show. Halfway through the season already. Yeah, Grant, you weren't watching Sunday Night Football. I watched this um, after Sunday Night Football. How how was that game? Was it pretty good? It was actually electric until Aaron and them stepped on their throats. But I enjoy football. Mm. It's good, man. Um, I'd like to say this. I'd like to issue an apology to my guy Otto Hightower. That guy, he like kind of seemed like a weasel, but what He's he said, what He's he said as what he said as he left was like. <clears throat> Summed up the whole entire first five episodes in one sentence. He's just like, you guys are really going to let her be the queen, and then everyone's going to try to kill you. So that's why I was trying to do what I did, and you can hate me if you want, but that's why. And I was like, yep, that just summed up everything. I don't. He he did have his own interests at heart in the little baby Aegon being the king, but he, as the hand needs to do, he knew what was best. Come on, Grant. That's a bad take. It's a bad dad move, and you know it. He's it's also like 20 He's- BC, dude. Things are different. <laughs> um, it's still gross. Still, but still I'm just saying he guy. was. He's a. But he's 100 percent right about what's about to happen, and I'm just glad someone said it. He might and be that's... right about that, but everybody knows that, so it's not like, like who doesn't know that? Who is unaware of that? Um, Viserys, who is still ride or dying with his daughter, like he's an idiot. Good he's dad. a loser. No, he's a loser, and that's my next point. I think my biggest beef with this show is I don't know if it's the actors or what, but the amount of like characters I actually respect in this show is tiny compared to the other series. And maybe I need more time with them to prove me wrong. But the only person I remotely think is like has I at least respect him is Damon because of his fighting ability. Everyone else is just an idiot or like there really is no in between with all these people. They're I can't believe they're running the society. They're dumb as all can be. Sir so Kristen was good until you know he like went insane and murdered a gay guy. He, well, no, before that he had sex one time and fell in love, and I was like, Grant, you can't control your who you fall in love with, man. I'm sure I mean, you and I would Marissa feel that way. You can retain, you can like refrain a little bit and still be kind of a man. He just was like a simp city. The minute. Because he ruined his whole night career. Yeah, and he has no morals. He 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 so broke yeah, down. That's why he was going to kill himself. Was we don't know if he did or not. I guess. I'm yeah. just saying, like there were some absolute dogs in the first edition of the show, and now there's no dogs. You did watch the first season of Game of Thrones, correct? Yes, I so watched you the think first three. through five. Mm, please, through the five what? episodes of the first season, you think that you. Had a bunch of respect for all those characters. Yeah, Jamie Lannister, one of the best swords. You were <laughs> like, yeah, that guy's awesome. I'm talking I'm about. Sorry, but come on, dude. I'm talking about just being a purely like man, like manly presence, like badasses in the show. There was three of them off the rip in the Which first were? season. Jamie, Rob Stark was sweet. Jon Snow was awesome with a sword, and I would even count Ned Stark because he was a brute force he just was way too loyal and kind of a bumbling idiot and got backstabbed through five episodes you knew all that yeah they showed up pretty early that mm-hmm. these people were legit hindsight's twenty twenty. they all became badass there's no doubt but like there's no one in this show right now that's a badass other than damon 
And he's weird. <laughs> well, yeah, he's pretty weird. That's my point. I don't know if you guys disagree or not. Well, there's no wars. There's nothing going on. A huge problem with the show. <laughs> a huge problem. They're building up to it. There's about what do you to think be is going to happen, Grant? You, I, I think, you're just so impatient about everything. No, I you think just, I figured you gotta out. dive right into it right away. You just want sex and war first episode. That's yeah, what you how, want. You got. It's called the hook. <laughs> you got to hook people. They in. got us on the hook. <laughs> yes, I'm the into first it. episode was the best like episode. It. I think it was a bigger gripe that I had as I was driving home today thinking about how I was going to potentially take some shots at Thrones and having some good defense. I think I just don't like Targaryens. I think they're soft. I think they just rely on their dragons and they have no actual combat skills themselves. And it pisses me off. You just now that's a feasible just argument. said. Just Damon. You just Damon. respect Damon who is a that's Targaryen. That's it. That's it. Everyone else, soft. They just rely on their dragons. Danny was the same way. She was not that much of a badass. She just trained a dragon. She did murder like a million people. With no skill. Just dragon sitting on, murder sitting on a dragon. It requires quite a bit of skill to ride a dragon. Does it? Would you be able to? I don't think so. If you trained me. No. <laughs> no. You wouldn't be able to. They literally made movies how to train your dragon. It can't be that hard. <laughs> Could not. The, ga- the Game of Thrones truthers are going to be down your throat about this. I'm just telling them to step back and look at it with a different lens. I'm going to enjoy these text hey, messages. DMs are open. Let us have it. So you are t- you guys are both telling me, like, you're like, yep, this is a fantastic show. Well, I'm in love with it. Yeah, okay. I like it a lot. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I do. I I keep watching. I'm, if I'm the real sucker, I keep watching. This is normal for you. You just, like, don't like anything that most people like. Incredibly wrong. And I hate when you spin on it like that. It's just true, though. Well, let's just rattle off some things universally loved that I also love. All the Batman series. Ooh. Top Gun Maverick. Love it. <laughs> James Bond. Love it. Great series. Like, I love all this stuff. If it's good. I love Succession. That was a big series in the world. I love all the things. As long as it's good. They're good quality and makes sense. I like it. I don't, I don't need to put you on blast. You've taken enough heat. What are you going to say? No. Let's continue. Let's move on. What were you going to say? No, I'm going to save part of this discussion for later in the show. Interesting. It's just a, I, it's just an attack of your character. Okay. Do anyone <laughs> have any? I'm looking forward to it. Did anyone have any more Thrones takes? I kind of hijacked that. I realized. Um. No. No, you summed it up perfectly. <laughs> <the show. laughs> Evan, please tell me that the middle school football team turned it around. Uh, seventh grade, undefeated, first game of the year, came out with a victory. At Do you Monroe. OC at both, both teams. Yeah, Alex, that's my title. It's a heavy workload. It Holy is. Holy shit! You'd expect just non-stop, more than two non-stop points. Non-stop fun and action right there. Um, yes. Uh, got a victory. Seventh grade got a victory. Eighteen to twelve. Um, need to work on our two point conversions. That's where we're lacking in the points wise there. <laughs> right. Um, defense sounds like a defensive led team. A very good defense team. Nah, um, not so your first specialty. Play of the game. <laughs> Vic Fangio. <laughs> I mean, we have kids on the seventh grade team that do not care about their like their body, and they will hit you. Bad parents. Okay. <laughs> no, very good tackles. You're so soft, Alex. You are soft. Your kid's definitely not playing football. I can see it in the future already. hundred percent. Uh, gotta have a girlfriend. Have a kid. Not oh, like Jesus. Evan. You're getting girls. You're not getting like all Evan. girls. You're getting all girls. You say when I have kids, fun at your cross country meets. Oh, jeez. They're probably be no. sw- they'll probably be swimmers. Playing soccer. Playing okay, soccer, um, ideal. So there was a... Oh, uh, wow. He <laughs> <laughs> got cut out. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let him finish. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Come on. Let him finish. Evan. Stages. Okay, so it's middle school football, and these coaches have no idea on the other side what to do. And so you know how the typical like fifth and sixth grade, like the big athlete, athletic kid, just like I mean like the big athletic kid, just let him play running back. Barney. That's what the seventh grade did too. Team did first play, they threw a bubble to him out of the backfield, and we're we're just so like so shocked that we're actually like playing the game. He runs over our middle linebacker that's like five foot nothing. Just <laughs> this dude is like six three, just massive. Would run massive you over seventh grader. Massive seventh grader. 
runs over a middle linebacker, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a long game. Second play, they fake the bubble, quarterback right up the middle, like a 50-yard touchdown. I was like, oh, this is going to be miserable. After that, only gave up a one-hour touchdown after that. Defense played fantastic. You're a defensive coordinator. Great coach. Great adjustments. He is. He is a wow. great coach. Who he is will it? not listen to this, but he is a great coach. Is it uh God? Yeah, you t- oh yeah, you told me who it was. Couldn't remember. This is um, the team that I could be an assistant coach for. You'd be assistant for both seventh and eighth. Wow. I have the best <laughs> special teams unit in the land. <laughs> um you'd be in charge of wide receivers, actually. Oh, we'd be elite. Get me a quarterback. I got one. Wow. Grant was playing quarterback in seventh grade. What a nightmare. <laughs> I was playing quarterback in eighth. Oh, and D tackle. Anyways. That was in seventh grade. Anyways, eighth grade. Well, seventh grade scored with 22 seconds left in the game. Wow. To win. It was tied up 12 12. Yep. To win. We did. I mean, it. that offense is not exactly packing a punch. It's the first game All for right, seventh God. grade. First game. Excited to hear this eighth grade turnaround. Eighth grade turnaround. Here we go. Okay. Um, second half, weather delay. I'm going to say that right ahead. Second half, thunderstorm came rolling through. Canceled. First half. <laughs> How's the team do here? Now did, the pitchforks are going to be coming out. Did Ben Johnson figure it out for this offense? Ben Johnson. For this is, offense. He, we actually moved the ball better. We did move the ball better. Give us the bat. Um, first drive, it stalled out because I signal in the plays. I call out the numbers. Um, instead of 25, they ran 35. Bad play call. Should have been 25. No, should have been 25. They called 35. Miscommunication there. Okay, stalled out. We had a punt. I feel like I'm on hard knocks. Yeah, you are. <laughs> Behind the scenes. You're just Someone rich. should record you this. O- I can see you guys over my shoulder just like, why would you do that? You What's your furthest play? game away? It closest to me. I got to go to one of these. It's over. I mean, the closest one to you is... You play on well, what day? Seventh grade, seventh grade plays at Ipsy in a couple weeks. Got to well, we play there. at four o'clock. Out. I need to you see the eighth grade team. <laughs> okay, I got to see the eighth grade team. Um, then we moved the ball very well on all drive. Moved the ball. Then we just shot ourselves in the foot with penalties, holding penalty, false start, not holding mm-hmm. penalty. That's on um, the head coach. Discipline. It was third. It was a spot foul for the holding penalty. It was like third and. Like 30. What? Why are they doing spot fouls? <laughs> <laughs> wait, how? <laughs> wait, how are you holding 20 yards back? Yeah, that's, it was, that is I was over exaggerating it. It was probably like third and like 20. Is your quarterback still. running backwards and all your old linemen are just following him? No. <laughs> and so, and then um, they got the ball and they kind of just like five yards here, five yards there. And then it, it was. Two minutes left, one minute left, two minutes left in the first half. And Lightning came in. We sent the locker room, then they canceled it. So how many quarters has the eighth grade team played? They have played less than four quarters. And they've f- scored they played three points? and a half quarters. And how they've many scored points? zero points? <laughs> God. Anything you say about offense is just not gonna be validated ever again. <laughs> yes, no, it is. we, we gotta turn this last around Evan. episode. Seventh grade. Seventh you, you grade. Gotta, you gotta do something. I, I'm working on you it. You gotta so we did make this the most simple off you run the wedge every you can lead. You can lead horses to water, you just can't make them drink it. You gotta right, make Alex. it more simple. You gotta Alex, make it we can't make it as How does it get we easier have... than inside zone right step with your right? Alex, we run Alex, we forward. have to run the same offense that the varsity is running so we can just explain hey coach i don't have the talent this is how you build a program hey coach when you get this team gets to high school quit quit your job (laughs) fun fact about when we were in seventh and eighth grade (laughs) when i believe coach uh mensing was there when we were running the like wing t that my dad cody's dad and adam's dad were like we're not running that. <laughs> yeah, and they just, just you guys didn't run it. They just ran whatever they wanted. They got in somewhat trouble, but they're like, no, we're just going to do an actual offense. <laughs> That's what Evan might be bordering on. They're just going to resort to the wedge if you can't figure it out. So you're running the spread with these kids? Yep. Mm. Wow, they must stink. God, Pistol. shot of shot of Michigan Pistol. sports. Gun. Like the offset, the and you have a good quarterback. Yeah, he's pretty solid. He can throw a yeah. ball. 
Grant had baby yes. hands trying to throw a ball in sixth grade. My quarterback is like six three, six four. Jesus. And you guys have zero points. Yes. Yeah, this is on coaching staff. We're gonna talk about Michigan State. It's gonna be the same thing. I was actually <laughs> screaming on the sideline last game. Just absolutely irate. And then like we had a long fifty yard touchdown run to like down to like the three, but I got called back for a holding. Oh, spot foul. And I'm sitting there just <laughs> crouched in like a catcher's position. And my assistant coach, God, this friend, is devastating. turns back. We and need looks a Netflix documentary of this. Looks team. at me while I have like my hands on my head, and I just look up at him. I'm like, "Good, go figure." Call a great call, great play call. You're already quitting on your team three and a no, half I'm not. into the season. I hope they no, listen to this and get motivated. Week. We got Bedford and then Bedford oh, and murder, Selena, I think. murder, double murder. <laughs> Bedford and Selena. zero points next two weeks. No, we're putting up 21, Alex. Book it. I'll shake your hand. Wow. We'll, we'll score 21 points. And we do, and we only have one more practice left. Monday, we're scoring 21 points. We'll discuss this on the weekend. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. Shot of Michigan sports memes is just absolutely licking their lips at this segment right here. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I love that Whoever tweet. That was so funny. Um, <laughs> um, and then, well, that was that was yesterday. Yeah. And so I'll backtrack. Friday, um, Friday Night Lights, biggest rivalry in Lenawee County. Got to go to that. Uh, great game. It's not a rivalry anymore. Dang. No. no. It's like the Ohio State Michigan game. Yeah. Well, well, well we just won. Well, that. I was gonna say that, but you know, it's not really the same anymore. Um Saturday had a wedding. Fantastic wedding. Um ceremony I think wrapped up in like less than fifteen minutes. You it love was that. fantastic. That is the best. Fabulous job. Efficient love. Um ceremony. Yep, so then the reception was great. Danced way too much. Drank, drank way too much. Way too much. Um, and then there was an after party. Then there was an mm. after party part two. Mm. Um, How many people went to the after party part two, Evan? Uh, just two of us. Me, me, and, uh, me and your roommate. Just <laughs> us two. Walking into, walking into Mux. <laughs> oh, my God. You had to be hammered to do that. Um, so one of us was more than the other. I'm not going to name names, but it wasn't me. Um, <laughs> oh, um, there's only two people, man. Yep. Um, and then we walked back from downtown all the way back to, uh, by Wendy's. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that walk had to suck. It wasn't too bad. It was actually went by really fast. You had to be hammered then. It's probably like weirdly well, peaceful. The next morning would next yeah, morning was, I was grinding so bad <clears throat> oh my gosh tried to make breakfast I'm not in my own place I'm they're like what? family to me anyway so I could do whatever I, I didn't walk back to my house Alex no 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 you tried to make breakfast at Drew's house yeah like, while you were sleeping they, they, no Drew was up they were all awake Drew ate a sandwich like a Jersey Mike's sub and there was <laughs> leftover eggs and I was like For yeah breakfast. I'm gonna have breakfast <laughs> Alex when we say breakfast it's like 11 o'clock already all right, that's a little better. I just imagine Drew got up at eight thirty and ate a Jersey Mike sub. No, it's disgusting. I, mean, Alex, I woke up at like Alex, we six. Drink, we eat Taco Bell when we're hungover, so I don't feel like I can judge at like anybody. two p.m. I woke up at six and then woke up again at like ten ten thirty. Hmm. Headache. Uh, yes. Upset stomach. Not yet. It was getting there, and I just got like I was just like in and out of like hot flashes, hmm. and so like. Just battling, trying to make my breakfast. Came back, rallied. I was like, okay, I'm better. Went over, hung out at Drew's grandparents. Saw some of his family, you know, talked to them for a while. Then we left. Then on the car ride home, Alex, literally as soon as you hung up, it hit me. I just turned into like a pale white ghost. And I'm sitting at the longest stoplight in Decumsey. Mouth is elevating. Yep. And I had to turn left. And I'm like, oh, God. I was like, Joe, you gotta pull over. Try to roll down the window, and he just turns Broken. me. Yeah, Broken. that window doesn't work. <laughs> I was like, oh no. oh no! He's like, you know, if I'm moving, just open the door. He pulls into wherever that dentist right there. Just <sighs> Great Lakes Family Dental. Just not just a free let it out. It's a nice just parking lot. Haven't threw up in your parking lot. <laughs> yeah, just let it out. And then precursor for Sunday, you ask how we do it all day Sunday, Grant. We take mm-hmm. a nap for half of the game. <laughs> I'm sure Kevin <laughs> didn't watch anything. 
Oh, I watched. I watched. He was the, quiet in the text. Team. <laughs> That's why we also don't text in the group chat because somebody might have been sleeping for a. You few woke hours. up and said roar. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that guy hasn't watched anything. No. Uh, I would watch plays here and there when uh, other family members would scream at the TV. So wake uh, up, look at it for four seconds, and pass back out. That was my weekend. Wow, I love it. It's hard to Alex. follow that. No, top that. <clears throat> um. All right. Thursday, apartment by myself. As I mentioned, as Evan mentioned, he went to a wedding. That wedding was Drew's sister's. So, apartment alone Thursday. You know, did some things like organize the Tupperware. Boo. Vacuumed. You know, things that you need to do that you just never do. I started running. This is okay. a new development. I've yeah, ran four pause. times now. Before you stop, I need to I need to bash somebody real quick. Okay. okay, way back in the middle of the summer, probably beginning of the summer, one of our friends said they were going to run a marathon on October seventh or eighth. Oh, right. oh yeah, and they were going to start training for it. And he trained for a solid like two weeks. I asked him recently, probably within the last couple of weeks, how it was going. <laughs> So are you saying I'm going to stop running pretty soon? <laughs> I'm going to say you will stop running pretty soon. Yeah. But I'm also I saying he, he texted me. He was like, dude, I played pickup basketball or whatever it was, I think. And he was like, dude, I was grinding up the court, just battling. And I was like, oh, so how's your marathon training going? And then he just like <laughs> chuckled at it. I was like, yeah, you're gotcha. not running a marathon. <laughs> so to, to go back to this, I ran Monday, Wednesday, Friday last week. Pretty good. After um, work? I was, yeah, at like 7 p.m dark it was like nighttime scary um, you and, and Aaron Glenn were out there talking defense yeah just grinding oh. i would i would just run a circle around the park it's like a pretty big circle i just passed this lady walking her dog like seven times it was awful um so i did that monday wednesday friday and then i actually ran yesterday too so i'm are i've already ran four times my calves hurt a lot I'm not enjoying it very much. <laughs> I like sound like a dying, like wheezing puppy. It's very awful. Um, but I what think do it's you good mean? Me. Like when you breathe, like it's like, <sighs> like I like so Asthma. out of breath within Asthma. like no, that's no, just out of shape, uh, in running shape, I guess. So yeah, I started doing that. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna try I'm, to make it longer than two weeks. I'm proud of you. I think you'll go until. <clears throat> Mid November, oh, that would be really mid November. The instant it gets cold, like I'm it, assuming, dude, yeah, it's gonna get cold. Than a month. Less than a month, he won't even make it to Halloween. Oof. Yeah, well, that mean, if I made it to the 15th of October, that's that I made it. And I mean, I would say at least two to three times mm-hmm. per week would be the pace. I would yeah. say. So I'm saying, oh yeah, because you started that week. Okay, you're not making it to Halloween. All right, that's fair. I might your not. only hope I'm is try if, to. your only hope is if you find like a better place to run at because you're just gonna get sick of that. Yeah, um, it helps that I walk to the gym and then I just run after, so I don't have a vehicle to take me home. So I'm already outside. It's not too hard to get myself to run. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I my plan was to go at like six a.m. Can't do it. I just physically cannot do it. I. Desperately tried. I set like three alarms. I get up and then I'm like, no, nope. no, I'll run later. I just, it's, I don't know how people do it. It's stunning. stunning. I, did, I did it one time in my entire life where I ran before work. Yeah. And it I, was awesome. I don't know. Alex, awesome. I think you could do it. I think you can do it at least once. You got to just try it once. I'm what trying, man. No, I tell myself every night it. before I go to sleep and I set all these alarms. I'm like, I know for a no, fact I'm going to do it. You need to set your don't alarm out of arms distance you need to get your old alarm clock and set on the other side of the room set that so you physically have to get up to set that alarm off I, I'm so gonna try. Point, you're already going to be you guys up. will one day get a snapchat of me running at 6 a.m yes not to i will the, cheer you on i will not, be up not to diminish or discourage you but what evan's describing i actually do do that every morning and i still just turn the alarm clock off and fall back in bed <laughs> you back in bed dude yeah and then I like wait till my phone goes off like 15 minutes later. Then I look at Twitter oh for like a half hour God. and then I get up. My dad does it. My <laughs> sister does it. They both work out in the morning. It's like, just how the, how the fuck are you guys doing this? 
I you don't feel better it. in the morning. And then you take a colder shower than a hot shower. So your body. Right. I, every time I run at night, I take a cold shower afterwards. And so morning, cold. actually cold showers actually are better for you in the morning. Oh, I know that Grant has told me that 8,000 times. No, there's a study behind it. It's actually like a proven no, fact. No, I know. I read it. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> I run. I don't think you did read that. No, I did. did after that. you told me. After you told me about it 20 times. So running. Uh before work that is the next goal and i've started running that's a good start uh what else did i do uh i watched the big short on friday it's a good movie I'm surprised i hadn't seen it it's a good finance movie. bro movie uh i watched I it with my family on christmas eve that's a weird time to watch that movie at the theaters when it came out really weird my good family cast. used to have like a used to have like a christmas eve or the 23rd like movie tradition and that was the hot movie it's a good movie it's a good cast um, so I did that, and then it has Saturday. Weird, like, one second, it has like really weird cutaway scenes. You know what I'm talking when about? When they like talk to the audience, Expl- yeah, like they break the wall and like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah, that is that is interesting. I always yeah. never loved that. No. Um. Then Saturday, I plan to just hang out, get some stuff done, and watch the game by myself. My dad begged me to come home, watch it with him. I said no. Then he texts me and then a bunch of my family members outside of my immediate family and invited them over. And I was like, all right, now, now I have to go because he's making <laughs> this big plan, trying to get me to come home. So I text my mom. I was like, wow, dad must really want me to come home. She's like, no, he doesn't. And I came home and they're like, oh, we're so glad you came home. So They love you. Went home. The Gillen living room streak is over. Uh, first loss in quite a while in that living room that I've watched the Michigan State football game. Pretty disappointing. And then Sunday, I just watched the Lions. No red zone. So you talked about all this grind. I didn't even do it on Sunday either because at home, I can't do that. My parents' TV is not very smart. I didn't have my laptop, and I wasn't going to watch football on my phone all day. So mm-hmm. I just watched the Lions and commercials and the CBS game, which I think was Browns-Jets. Browns-Jets, yeah. Old school. It my was God. weird. It felt felt weird. And then last thing, this is probably the most important thing. I made Grant's chicken wings. I had it written down in case you forgot. I did make them in the air fryer. Grant didn't lie. Phenomenal. Yeah. Really good. They were bussing. They were bussing, bussing. Shout out to Google. And yeah, I think we should make them on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, we should do that. It's very easy to do. It took... Like, no skill whatsoever. Zero. <laughs> They're dummy proof. And okay. phenomenal tasting. It's in. Confirmed. Mm-hmm. And Grant was right. You don't need sauce. You could eat them plain. Yeah. Something about the, the different seasoning. You added, like, a chicken seasoning as well, did you do? Whatever you said. I pretty much followed it. I might, I might have missed one thing, and I replaced it with whatever I found. I don't remember what it was. But, yeah, it tasted like legit wings from, like, a restaurant. Better than beat ups. Uh, B Dubs had sauce. I like sauce. B Dubs well, overrated. You could do you that if you want, sauce. Alex. I went to the store and I was gonna buy some B Dubs sauce if they mm. had it. Didn't have any. So Did Frank's right. Red Hot Buffalo is what it used on the side. Beautiful. All right. Well, the first listener question of the night was about the Tigers. How ironic is this, guys? Someone wrote in to us. And said, when will you guys talk about the Tigers? Before we hired Scott Harris. Amazing timing. So I had written. That guy's in the know. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe that person works for the team. It was Scott Harris. (laughs) (laughs) Because I had written down. first guest in a long time is Scott Harris. Could you imagine? Well, I think. Pretty cool. From what I read. No spoilers. I think we get along with him pretty well. Potentially. Um, Spoilers? Like you're about to read us a book? No. Well, I do have a lot of notes written about this guy. Can I continue? I'm going to have to mention something before you get too deep. Fine. Yeah, this is just setting the stage. So what I had wrote down before the news came in, I said, tires are 55 and 91, eliminated from the playoffs, the fourth worst team in the entire league. And then I just said, do we have a GM yet? That's probably when we'll talk about them. And then, boom, we hired a GM. So there's, Now there's that's where I have to correct you. This guy is not a GM. But president of baseball operations and he is hiring a gm right and then i to read do what everything that he says what 
how it works now is Probably. I don't know why baseball just got baseball is such an old game. They just invent new things. So what I have come to learn that the president of baseball ops is what a GM is. And then the GM is just the assistant GM. They just put fancier titles on it. It's true. This is why the sport stinks. Correct. <laughs> it's like, very confusing. They can't just do anything normal. No. It, it, they said like president of baseball ops is what you think of when you think of a GM. They do all like the big trades. They make all those decisions. The a GM is just his assistant. It does make sense, like president of the baseball operations. It's like yeah, but of- Evan, every other sports league has a GM that does all that. Yeah. So why yeah, not just like have a GM? Where, like, but why would you yeah. have a GM? There's yeah. too many egos. There's too many egos in baseball. You got too many people. Couldn't they name this whoever this GM Could is? You Couldn't they just Rod call him like being the GM? Look at that guy. <laughs> well, he is like in charge of the business aspect of the right. thing, and there is no business aspect, a less business aspect of the MLB because they don't make as much money as the NFL. There's a hundred percent a business guy. We just don't know who he is because we don't care. We don't care about Rod Wood. Huh? I don't. Roger do Goodell does. He just got like promoted for like being a good guy or something like that. <laughs> what? He's he got, it job. wasn't promotion. He got like a, <laughs> a good guy. Rod. A thank you note being like, hey, you guys are pretty nice. Here's the draft. Him, Sheila, and Brad. Oh my god, I forgot we have the draft. So the biggest thing here, there's a couple of big things. There's one for Evan that I hope Evan has seen. I hope you, you haven't seen it, Evan, so I can tell you, and then I think you'll be all in on this guy. Okay. So first of all, I'd like to say this because I'm very pro Scott Harris. Is anyone negative Scott Harris? I am not negative Scott Harris from everything that I have read. I am like super negative Detroit Tigers guy. <laughs> okay. Oh, Alex, I will change your mind. But Hopefully I Grant am... doesn't steal my mind, but Go I ahead. am very in on the hire. Though. Don't change. Don't change Despite my mind. Despite that, I don't am take my point either. I have my spin zone of all time. I'm team spin Harris. Zone? I have a spin zone for this. If you, unless you take my point, then I can't no, spin zone. If you say spin zone, you go first. Okay, spin zone. Alex, do you know who helped in hiring? That's it. The new <laughs> Steve Eiserman. operation. Steve Eiserman. Even I know that he guy. is Come so on. good at his job that he can do other people's job for him. <laughs> like he that's is a, above that's... else. That's how bad Chris Illich is at his job. Well, correct, but that's how good Steve Eiserman is. <laughs> that's at, how we know the at, Tigers will never be good as long as he's the owner. Spin zone, we still stink. No, Steve Eiserman is very good at developing talent and identifying talent. He's going to identify talent for the Detroit Tigers <laughs> and yes. the Red Wings. Holy <laughs> Do shit. Do it yourself. I mean, look how good the Red Wings are. Look how good young Make talent they have. Make this man a statue now. Well, yeah, based, based, on on Alex's, based on Alex's theory, the Red Wings will never be good, too, because they have the same owner. Correct. You guys see the common denominator <laughs> False, here? False, Alex. An- another point. I meant that. On top of the eyes, I heard that my ears perked up. I'm like, oh my God, Evan's going to love this guy. <laughs> um, the, we, we talked on the show a lot of times about how we needed Theo Epstein to save his team. We couldn't get him, but Close, this guy. we got, One of we got the guy who, who is his protege. We got Theo Epstein's protege. Worked under him in Chicago. Was basically like, he bullied him. He like made this guy who he is. He made him a man. Even though he's still 35, which is crazy to think about. Holy, he's not he got higher than us, dude. He got hired to be like high up, and he was like third in command for the Cubs when he was 25. Well, I mean, that makes a lot of sense because the three of us could easily be that high up in an organization right now. He worked as a combined one person. He worked at the league office for the MLB in New York, and they like the Cubs. Jed Hoyer and Theo needed talent. And they called the office because they knew a guy, and they're like, "This guy's sharp. He doesn't exactly have the intent, like the skills yet that you need, but he'll like you just teach him it." And they're like, "Okay." And they hired him, and they taught him everything, and he hit the ground running. This is the guy. I feel like I'm We're watching back. Moneyball right now. Yes, and you want to go even more, Alex? We just found our he, Jonah Hill, Scott Harris, our new president of baseball ops. President, our president, P O or Pobo. President of Baseball Ops, our Pobo. Yep, that's faster than saying that. I hate, he's, I hate that. He's the son of two doctors, so his parents are both doctors. So he went to snooty. He went to UCLA. Oh wow! With an econo- God, no, but he's not. Economics it's like a degree, Michigan grad. Economics degree. Then he went to Columbia in New York, and then he went to Northwestern. This guy's a goddamn genius. And guess what? <laughs> <laughs> what Theo said about Scott Harris in an athletic article I read, he said, the crazy thing is about Scott is he's not one of those guys who tells you where he went to school. He's very humble. And he said, I don't know how anybody could ever dislike Scott Harris. Quote. How has he done all that 
all those three degrees. Yep. And you know how? already ascended to this position. This guy you know, is an he, actual Albert Einstein. When he worked for the Cubs, he had a full schedule for them, but he had Saturday classes um, in Columbia. He probably went to Northwestern when he was at the Cubs. No, no, because he had to, he worked somewhere and he had to f- take red eye flights in the morning to finish his classes on Saturdays and would fly back and work on Sunday. He would just oh fly, do God. classes. On, and I was like, this guy's just built differently. We're going to win a hundred World <laughs> Series with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Chris Illich. A big thing we talked about with GMs is how they look. How how the guy in command Brad, looks. Don't do it. He's a nice guy. And we remember when we hired Brad Holmes, we were like, okay, um, he looks really smart. He had the glasses on, the blue light glasses, at his, like his um, draft photos and whatnot. Hey, there's some bad photos of Troy out there. So <laughs> we can't, this <laughs> argument, it doesn't totally apply. This guy, Scott, he either looks like he's going to be the smartest human in the whole world and win us a Hunter World Series or a bust because he like has that face. That like if things go bad, I'm like this this guy, this kid. We're gonna call him a kid. We're gonna be like, oh, he's only 35. I'm on board. I'm not saying the there. <laughs> it had to be said. We'll never get him on for an interview. You Grant can cut that. I'm just but, telling you but guys. But really, but really, he's the genius. Is how we have to view it. Oh, I think he's gonna be great at his job. If it makes you feel better, Alex, with the whole the organization is a dumpster fire. I watched his opening press conference on two times speed, and the audio issues were rampant for the Detroit Tigers organization. They couldn't even get the audio right for their pres- their Pobos opening press conference. What a joke of an organization! Thankful it was static. Did not work it cut there. out. It cut out. The volume went up and down, and I was like, "This is the Tigers franchise right now." Trying to introduce this man to the public, and I can barely hear him. Two last things. So I know we want to get the football. Do we? He had one of the best quotes I think I've heard. He said, we are going to dominate the strike zone, essentially. I'm paraphrasing for him, but he said, we're just going to dominate the strike zone because it affects every single thing in the sport of baseball. And I sat there with my little dumb brain. I was like, yeah, the strike zone is important. We should dominate it. <laughs> yeah, that's just... You think so? Well, whatever. I don't Both know. Both sides, offense and defense, you is have to that... dominate the strike zone. Is that Pobo speak? <laughs> That's just boy genius speak. Like, you just dominate. I never heard Al Avila say we're going to try to dominate the strike zone. Never so said simple. that. He said he was yeah. going to also try to like be heavy into offseason acquisitions. He said we need to acquire young talent. That was his first pillar of his success. Two, build a culture of development so people get better when they come here. And three, we're going to dominate the strike zone. I hope he fires and then, everybody in the scout and then department. He dr- I would fire the owner. He might. <laughs> He's ready to yeah, check. That's He's ready to check, though. Um, and then the very last thing, not to crap on people, um, but this is just this is why we should be credentialed because I just can't imagine that this actually happened. I I stopped the press conference and started laughing to myself. I'm not even kidding. Like the Bryson video, um, Stony from 97.1 was there oh my God. in attendance. <laughs> and Alex, can you guess what his first question? To our new Pobo was? No, I can't guess, but I'm sure it was stupid. He goes, are you going to keep Miguel Cabrera around next year? It's like, what? This guy just got here. You think talk to Miguel Cabrera? He has no idea what he's going to do yet. Dude. Like, You're well, telling me we couldn't have jobs in this industry. Like, there is so many better questions you could ask about the hiring process, what it was like when you got to town, what are your goals, and just saying, are you going to keep Miguel? Like, dude, he doesn't know. He just started today. Hey, Scott, have you had Detroit Wing Company before? <laughs> I know you've been here for about an hour. Uh, Lafayette or, Con- or the other Coney place? <laughs> Mayor? <laughs> dude. You fan of thick crust? Your thoughts on the prices of the beer? <laughs> and of course, he's just like, um, Miguel's a great player in our game. I, I just haven't talked to him yet. It's like, like, like sat down and thought about that. Like, no, no shit. He's just started. Why, why are you wasting the man's time? I'm pretty sure someone asked Brad Holmes right away. What are you going to do about Matthew Stafford? It's like, these guys just started. I got on a plane, buddy, this morning. Yeah. I just got oh, here. Oh, I'm actually going to release him. So, write that. <laughs> yeah. And even if he did know, he's not going to just tell you right off the rip. Uh, we're just wasting people's time. Okay. Lions, Commanders, 
Here we go on the recast, boys. Buckle up. Let's be efficient. Let's be fast like the Lions offense has been the first two games of the season. Damn. Yeah. Scoring dry- touchdowns on 36% of their drives. Let's start Let's start with this. Do I say that stat again? Scoring touchdowns on 36% of their drives is the third or fourth highest in the NFL. That's really nice. Let's start with the listener questions so we do not forget them. There are two. One, do you think the Lions will have a winning record this season after what you've seen through two games? Yes. No. Wow. <laughs> I'm not changing my opinion based Debate. off of Evan, two you predicted, games. You predicted an above 500 season, and now yeah. you've seen tangible success. Yeah, Evan, you were, the, you were the, the most, most – I'll go pull it up. You predicted the, the most, most wins. Okay. Okay. Can you play back what my prediction was? Do you have it on you? I have it on our Instagram account. We did post that one. You Evan, you had wins. us going 10 and 7. So actually, I will stick with no because my predictions aren't going to change because they were above 500 before I saw us bend over the commanders. Is that so, right? I'm not sure what you just said. You kind Are of just they like, going to finish above 500 or no? Yes, but I'm not changing my prediction because it was okay. already correct to begin with. Got it. Yes. I'll stick with yes. I think, I think I, all of us had us going one and one in the first two games, correct? Am I wrong? I certainly didn't have us beating the Eagles. Yeah, I had us one and one. I well, I said Carson once you I flagged it from I the I might off have season. had us zero and two, but I got us back to over five hundred. Well, yeah, was, you are a Carson once stand. I was doing some listening back. Well, he's he an just... elite fantasy football quarterback. Two, two most games. passing yards in the second half in the NFL right now. Um, Packs no cap. So that's that's uh, Alex on IG. That was his question. Yes, Lions will have a winning record this season. Um, second one. From Gino, friend of the program on Twitter. Can Amonra St. Brown be considered a top five wide receiver legitimately? I think so. Let's f-ing go Lions. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, sorry. I'll be that guy. No. Is he considered I, I right now a top five wide? No. I agree with you too. Like he on just, paper right now, he's right there. But He like, doesn't have the tools to ever be top five. He doesn't have ever? the one thing. No. Wow. What's the one thing that he's missing? He, just, just think about all the guys that you would. Who do you consider a top five wideout right now? Alex, no, I asked you a question first. It, what is, it would what help is the one thing this. he's missing? He just doesn't do anything outrageous. He's not the best at anything. I know exactly he's what really Alex good is refusing at everything, to say. Say, but he's not. But what isn't he? He's not flashy. He has. That's not really what I mean. Yeah, he's not gonna make every 50 50 catch like over people he can't do that he's small just he's not the he's fastest not big enough. just dude. tell me that he's not big enough in this conversation would have already been over like a minute ago he's really good at everything not great at anything the top five receivers are elite at a couple things he's, he's great at catching the ball away from his body i think he's he has, very he good has two run drops catch. i think he's very good at the yak He's also sneaky fast. I didn't realize he was like top five in the league. He didn't have a drop one his rookie year. Out. Those two drops that you saw against the Eagles were the first two drops of the year. Of his career, actually. Take that back. I understand that. I'm just saying. Would he you take could, Devontae Adams or will he ever be as good as Devontae Adams? He will could, he ever he be could, good as Stephon Diggs? I think he could be a top five receiver in this league. It w- w- with some time and years go by. I don't think right now I can say that yet. I'm w- I am exactly with Grant. I don't think right now, currently, no. His last eight games, you can argue fantasy-wise, stats-wise, he's a top 10 wide receiver, but you also look at the first half of his career, the first eight uh, games of last season. Dan's fault. Because we were there at the Philly game and they weren't using him. He wasn't even on the field. He said, why used, aren't you playing your best player? He heard us booing him. They heard us booing in the stands. You're like, that kid's wearing a Monterey St. Brown jersey. Like, I think we probably should play him a little bit more. And the guy behind him has got a bag on his head. Do you want him to become <laughs> that guy? But here's, there's, I think, the biggest point. For for him getting there, before last season, nobody, nobody would have said Cooper Cup was a top five receiver in the NFL. He has that season with Stafford, and here he is now. Amonra could have maybe not quite quite that high of a season because that was historic. But he's breaking. He's also breaking. He's also breaking records right now. I mean, Amonra is shattering every single record every single week. Oh, boom! He did this. Boom! He did that. So he could have a a season just under that and then boom he's a top five receiver at least going into the next year but right now he's not there's still you got justin jefferson you got jamar chase you got Devonte adams you got cooper cup you got stefan Diggs Stephane after Diggs. what he did Stephane i mean this is probably top three really good i mean you just got it's just 
I Stephon don't. Diggs could be argued as a top two. Him, I like think Cooper Cup wants Stephon Diggs two right now. I was I looking think at Devontae Adams is the best overall receiver personally. I think Amonra St. Brown is top fifteen as we sit here today. That was going to be my final thing. I think he'll consistently be a top 15 receiver throughout his whole career. I just don't know if he'll ever jump to the top five level. But he will always be good. Like, he is very good. We should be very grateful we have him. I'm very grateful. My only skepticism is probably, like, Goff as the quarterback. Well, yeah. But we might have not have to worry about that. We might not have to worry about that, but you're also going to have to see Goff play outside of playing well at home. He needs to play well on the road and outdoors. It's a big week this week. Big, Very big. Teaser for it. But it's an indoors, so. <laughs> Teasers. Um, so those are the two questions that kind of covers. Amon obviously had a fantastic game. Alex's guy that he had his eye on, Swift, continues to be an absolute nightmare for teams he plays against. Any thoughts He's on got that dog. Swift? Grant, He's got that you, dog. Did you uh, calculate how many touches he did? Are the, did the Lions listen to our podcast? You know, he's I, hurt, dude. I but I knew he was on a snap count, so I kind of was holding that. I'm trying trying to hold that game against dude, our coaching staff. Hurt, and then he does all that. My ass, he's hurt. They said yeah, that's a good point. They, a good Dan point. said today, last week, that DeAndre Swift at this time was like awful. Like couldn't move. Five rushes and two catches, and he had like almost 100 yards on seven touches. <laughs> he's a freak. He's injured, he and he did that. Touches. Yeah, he was hurt, Evan. I mean, Craig Reynolds is not playing that much. No offense, Greg, great guy, is not going to play that much if DeAndre Swift is fully healthy. No, no, he'll be. I hope he's better. I hope he didn't retweet, reaggravate anything. Um, and I, I've been a little bit hard, I would say, because I know Jamal Williams is a fan favorite. Everyone loves his quirky personality, and he's a leader. He played all and right. He, he cried in training camp. I get it, but he, you can just visually tell, like he. The whole, well, let's be honest. The holes the Lions offensive line was creating, I could run through. I think could run through. Alex could run through and get five yards and fall down. Jamal just doesn't make that one-on-one guy miss in the safety level. He just runs into him, whereas DeAndre hits it for 50. So that's like the big yeah, difference. Yeah, but you, just need, you need a second running back to get downhill and, you know, gets the dirty yards. There's nothing wrong with having him no, get some I just, carries a game. I just need him to have like five carries a game. How many did and, he have? Well, it, this is Swift different is because hurt, so it's Swift's not really hurt. Him. He had double digits, but Swift is hurt, so that's why. Um, but yeah, so I guess also shout out to the Lions offensive line. They've been getting a lot of film breakdowns from um, Bal- Brian Baldinger. does great work on Twitter about breaking down plays. Some of our runs, Evan, you might want to tap into some of those sessions. Oh, I, for I, I, they, pop up, they pop up and I watch them all on they, Monday and Tuesday. They ran you coach one, your team to do that. Alex, you know how complicated that would be. Yeah, they ran one where they let the nose tackle free and trapped him with the tight end. And I was like, what are we doing? We, we do let, some cool shit. It was, they called it like three guys go this way and then two scoop around. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know how they're pulling that off and it's working against the actual NFL teams, but it's sweet. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Um, And that was with an offensive line that was missing. It's three interior linemen, which is crazy. Still really looking forward to the day we have the entire starting lineup. Could you imagine? But for Almost now I got, can't because we never will. If Jared Goff? Jared Goff, I would say, gave us a mixed bag, but overall he looked better this week. What did you guys think of his performance? It was, um, yeah, mixed bag. He made the throws when he needed to, and he won us a football game. And he looked much better than he did in week one. He still has some bad incompletions, um, but I mean he he can he can win us football games. I think that's what I took away from this. He's not David Blau or Tim Boyle. Sorry, um, I think it was like the difference. It was like he, yeah, he had some bad throws, but he also had some tight window throws or accuracy throws that he didn't have in the first week that just like stood up out or sort of above, you know, through long eight drives. <laughs> Or just gives him better situations. Um, the one I, for sure is like the one over the middle to Hawkinson when Hawkinson was jogging, not expecting to catch it. And it's a tight window just outside reach of the defender. So I think Goff played well, solid. It's just a matter of can he do it every single week away from home and outdoors, like I said earlier. Um. Yeah. 
based on what you said, Grant, you can give your Jared Goff thoughts, but I don't want to. I want to make sure we talk about TJ Hawkinson. I got some issues with him. Lay him out there. I didn't know if you wanted to talk about your thoughts on Jared first. I just said he. I, I kind of pr- opened it with saying it was a mixed bag, but overall better. All right. Well, TJ Hawkinson stinks. So that's just how I feel at this point. He leads the league and drops. Um. I get it. Some of the throws his way are not great, but it hits his hands. He doesn't catch the ball. I don't watch his blocking, I'll be honest. I hope it's good. It's but really good. It's like phenomenally good. That's what I figured. It's unfortunate. <laughs> but like he's he's supposed to be really good at blocking and really good th- pass catching threat and I don't even think he is like in the top 8 tight ends. Like we don't notice him. He doesn't you do just, anything you're just spectacular. Living in a fantasy football world, he he made one catch in this game. You're just of based value. off fantasy football. This has nothing to do with fantasy football. I don't have him in any fantasy leagues. I've never had him. I don't care about him in fantasy football. I care that he helps the Lions, and I feel like he just doesn't do much. And we every off season, I hear like offensive coaches talk about how they got to get the tight end involved. We're supposed to have a good tight end. He does nothing. Does nothing is a little bit of a reach. reach. He does nothing pass catching wise. Let's see his stats that- on the year, Alex. Not great so far. I believe uh, that. But he does have pedigree. Leads I mean, the league did, in drops. He did have a 723 yard receiving yard season. So we know his he's rookie year. It. No, his second year in the league. Six he's touchdowns that year. It was by far his best year. But like, I understand your point. It's just going to come. It's, this conversation it just, always it starts and ends with where he was drafted. I was just we can't control that. that. We just have to be grateful that we have a solid tight end on our team. Nine point one yards per catch, Alex. Some are saying he's not getting the ball enough. He gets. <laughs> he has fourteen targets. He has a fifty percent catch rate. That's garbage. Okay, but you know what the targets mean, Alex. He leads the league in drops. How many drops is it? Seven. No, Alex. Just because it's a target and it's a, I thought that's what I saw. I'm gonna have to look, but it was something. Doesn't mean it's pretty a drop. high, dude. If he drops seven footballs in two games, that's an alarming. You God. would know. I'll, I'll, I'll check. I'll check. You're accusing this man of. He does lead the league. So you drops. tell me, Amonra has seven drops too? No, I've, I know how targets work. Okay, it doesn't mean that every target's catchable. I I know how that works. <laughs> I'm telling you, he has a lot of drops. Well, based off of your math that you just accused T.J. Hawkinson of, it's the same. Same math. Sorry. The Lions lead the NFL and drop passes with seven. TJ oh, Hawkinson God. is tied for the league in the most with three. With, with three? three? That's not. He that's had not three on Give Sunday. Give me a freaking break. We're talking about three drops. Holy. If, it's, yes. if he drops an open touchdown pass, that's one thing. He's just probably dropping like a five-yard in route. Whatever. Guys. Move on. <laughs> Guys. To the next play. Seventh pick in the NFL draft can't catch passes. I'm, His fault. Alex, we knew it was right, a bad pick. All right, would you wear, so you want Eric Ebron back? Because I'm comfortable I, I with just get, I get the same I vibes. love Hawkinson, but I'd rather have Ed Oliver. Okay. Same. Yeah, we could do that. We could do this for mm-hmm. hours about guys. We, I'm not, but I'm saying Bring I'd rather have Hawkinson. I'd, I'm at the point where I still rather have Hawkinson on my team than not on my team. Um, what do we pay him? Probably a lot. We probably haven't ten million. No, still on his rookie, I believe. That's what the yeah, big but it's probably still ten million. Him. Yeah, he around there. Was, yeah, I would say seven or eight, eight and a half, maybe. Yeah, if we if we end up you dropping him, the numbers going. If we drop him a bag, Alex, crunching then his yes. drops. He had eleven drops last year. This is an alarming trend. Deontay Johnson led the league in drops for a while, and he's a dog. So and their it, team sucks. Well, because they're not playing the right quarterback. We're just getting we're we're talking in circles here. <laughs> his cap hit is six million dollars. Not terrible, dude. Not PFF is so garbage. Except, except it when has they support your team. Drops is locked, so you can't see that. You got to pay to see their drops. That's not garbage. They want your money. They're a business. They're trying, it's called America. No, it's a shitty business because no one knows how it works. Pony up. Um, yeah, if we extend him and it's a lot of money, then we can revisit this conversation. But I think right now, I'm not going to like be down his throat up because he's still a really good run blocker and does a lot of good things for our offense. <sighs> Who did great stuff. The last two things are just guys I want to pat on the back. Aiden Hutchinson. Coming out party. Welcome to the NFL. Odds on Lear to win defensive rookie of the year. Out of like Julius Peppers um, had some stat 
that Aiden just had three sacks in like one of his first games. Whenever you're in Julius Peppers' company, you know you're a good player. I know Evan has a spin zone of that that Hutchinson didn't play that well. He was asleep for I it. Don't have the, the, I don't have a spin zone. I woke up the second Damn. half and I said, wow, it's 22 nothing." My dad said, yeah, Hutchinson has three sacks. And I clapped and I was like, good for him. Well, Evan was like, yeah, if I didn't see him happen, though, did he really have did, them? So. Did he really get them? Asterisk there. Um, I could be the guy be like, yeah, the elder players fed him to him because he they did the dirty work and he was just there. That's the only spin zone. I think we need, were, to, were, we need to credit the entire defensive line for playing really well. Sacks. They were hustle sacks. One of them was. One was, you should have heard my dad watching this game. My dad is still not in on a. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson yet? We need to have a talk with which Gary. is fine. Well, he's not going to play on Sunday when we need him the most. Against he's going to play. A talented offense, so. he's going to play. But when Aiden Hutchinson today. got the sack where he's he just resting, ran up the middle when no one blocked him, my dad just looks at me. He's like, "Yeah, I mean, I can do that. I can make that sack." Like executing a twist blitz is just. I not. tried to explain. I'm like, Dad, you got to be super fast. You got to run around. Like, there's no chance you can do that. And he's like, "Unblocked, easy sack." <laughs> Then, specimen. He definitely could do it. The other one when uh, Wentz kind of like backed into him. My dad said that was a gift. <laughs> I mean, so, but he yeah, started but Michael to. Michael Strahan also broke the sack record when Brett Favre just laid down on the ground. <laughs> True. True. But he also did eventually. He was impressed with his run stopping. and He also had good tackles out. Yeah. So he's, he's in on him, I think. Another guy, know. well, stay tuned. Another guy we should be in on is Jeff Okuda. Jeff Okuda. Continues to impress me with my eyeballs. Um, again, with PFF, I do not. Alex just rolled his eyes. Speaking of eyes, I do not have PFF as well. I will not pay for it. Um, so I rely on Absolutely burner Twitter. I rely on burner Twitter accounts to tell me like what information that they saw that they pay for. Um, a very like low followed Lions fan account said per PFF in his subscription that Jeff Okuda was targeted five times. He gave up three catches for 31 yards with a long of 17. And that is exactly like the worst case that I want for Jeff. We talked about you can give up a couple passes, just nothing crazy, nothing that's going to break our backs and make plays when you need to. And he did that. That's not elite corner numbers by any means. Let's just start there. We're not talking. I'm not saying he's elite. Good for Jeff for improving. Jeff was elite week one. He gave up zero catches to Devonta Smith. And then he was good Jeff in week tackles two. well. Jeff is an amazing tackler. Jeff was not worthy of the third pick in the NFL draft, and I can never get over that. No, but I don't think anybody's arguing that point. I think people want that to be the case. No, I'm saying I'm, – I'm We had two still, dummies running our organization at that point. It's unfortunate for Jeff. There's still hope, though, that Jeff could get there. This is the second game back. You don't think he could ever get there after what you've seen through two to weeks? J- to – Above Jalen Ramsey level, considering you think Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey now or Jalen Ramsey in his prime. Jalen, Jalen, Jalen Ramsey, Ramsey is, is burnt toast. Game winning interception last week. Yeah, he sucks. Oh, Marcus Mariota. Nobody so was sick. watching that game. Who ca- guys? Brady you can't be serious. You think Jalen Ramsey's bad? He's I think bad he's in week one. Now he was really bad in week one. Really bad. Was he good was at any point in his career? Who's if Jalen Ramsey, if Jalen Ramsey did. guarding in week two, who was he guarding? I don't know. Exactly. Drake, Drake London, maybe? He caught a touchdown. Yeah, Drake London looked good against Jalen Ramsey. We don't know. Guys. I'm just saying, if Okuda did what Jalen Ramsey did on week one, you'd be calling for his head. He wouldn't be on the field. It's it's absurd the standard we're holding him to. Correct. And he has been in the league and has been successful and was an actual lockdown corner in the league who made plays all over the field despite this year. Despite whatever yeah, the I'm Super Bowl, that, Alex. I'm, saying, I'm saying Jeff Okuda will never reach that level. No, I. So that's where I disagree. I think Okuda could get to a, the level where like you have to game plan and he can take away a side of the field. I don't know why we get wouldn't believe that. Here, dude. I don't think he'll ever get to that level. I think he would just Jesus. be a guy that. Do you can know how good Jalen us. Ramsey was at his peak? Yes, I watched football. Yeah, did, have you watched Jeff Okuda play football? I didn't say he football? would be a carbon copy Jalen Ramsey. They're built differently. Jeff is more slender and like speed, where Jalen Ramsey is also like a more physical cornerback. So what I'm saying is, I'm saying you're an offense, and you're like, we're not really going to throw to that side of the field as much because Jeff Okuda is going to lock down a guy. I'm saying he can get to that what's, level. It, what's your ceiling for Jeff, player-wise? Like a top five cornerback in the NFL. And we're give like, a, you give me a name. 
Why does that have to be comparison to names? Why do you need to look at a guy? I have an idea. So I have an idea what you think for Jeff Okuda. Darius Slay, after his Monday night game, Jeff Okuda could do that in a football game. Uh, One game or like will be that good for a season, Grant? I don't give a shit if Jeff Okuda has one phenomenal game. he He could have a dominant season in the NFL. I don't see why not. He's incredibly talented and he's basically still a rookie with the amount of games he's played in his life. Fine. If, we'll see. If, if these were his first two games as a rookie, you'd be like, oh my God, this guy's going to be awesome. But now you won't do it because it's technically year three because he set out a whole year and then missed half of another year. And sucked in one in all the games he played before this point. Because he had a poncho man coaching him. Fine. And I think he's playing better. I'm just not going to act like he'll ever be worth the third pick, which is what you just said. I'm not going to give up on him. I think he still has I'm it not in giving up on him. I think he can be a good player in the league. He'll so, never be an all-pro type of player. Yeah, I, I'm not ready to say that yet. I haven't seen enough of his tape to be like, yep, he's for sure never going to be an all-pro. I mean, he put he put Devonta Smith in an absolute blender and put Terry McLaurin in one in the first half. and then Terry Devontae McLaurin, Smith has like one catch this season through two games. No, he caught a lot of passes on Monday Night Football. What, three? But put him in an absolute coffin on first week and put Terry McLaurin in a coffin through one half and then gave up like one catch and missed a tackle. Three catches for 31 yards. You just said that. That was not all Terry McLaurin. I was saying Terry. I'm talking about like big time receivers when he's matched up on them. Terry McLaurin played liberal receiver. All I right. Say. Well, I hope he guards Justin Jefferson this upcoming week, the entire game. So then I can actually know if he will reach this level because if he does really well and, and he, his assignment is that, then yes, then I will fully agree with everything you just said. I know, like you'll flip flop so fast, but that's why it's crazy. It's that not flip flopping. That's just proven, proving what I see on the field. And I know there's no question marks. I just think with that still there, you're open to that. It sounds like you're already saying no. He even if he's like good in one game, it's just a one off. He'll never be like good, good. I don't believe he'll be all pro Jalen Ramsey level or Darius Slay level. No, but if he locks down someone really good in the next couple of weeks still like no he's not gonna reach that i can always be swayed by my eyeballs but i will not be swayed by chatter okay i think that's fair i can respect that thought process i just think you've jumped to a conclusion way too fast i want him all. to be good i want him to be good he being good means lions are good yeah, that's everybody right. wants that he's a big part why they've been competitive in the first two games We, that's just a fact. We've given up like the fifth most points in the league. It's not all his fault. No, but he's not exactly making us elite at defense either. Continue. Move on. Enough he's, Jeff Okuda talk. He's doing every, everything that Jeff Okuda has been asked so far. He's answered it. Well, he should have been guarding AJ Brown because if he's that good. That's not what he was asked to do, though. That's not his call. He doesn't get to decide who he guards. <laughs> Evan. Maybe the coaches didn't put him on him so that people like me wouldn't abuse him the next day for getting flamed against AJ Well, Brown. speaking of coaches who are horseshit, Michigan State, Washington. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I can say that because he said that himself. Correct. He did say that quote. Evan, what do you think about this game? Okay, luckily. Didn't watch it. <laughs> Evan didn't There's watch this. football this weekend. I did. There were some things bigger than it just. You a told us game. at the beginning of the season. Alex my goal bigger. is to watch more football. Alex, there's some things bigger than just a football Love. than a football game. No, Love. I agree. You, you, you made have the right friends decisions. and family involved in an event that only takes place once in their life. You made the right decision. You have to. You have to celebrate it. You do. Now Love. I watched the very first three drives, and I was absolutely <laughs> disgusted with the performance. Now I did watch. Um, key plays and rewatch the entire game. Fast forwarding some plays that I've already seen before. Um, I read Twitter. <laughs> I don't know why you do that. Bad idea. Um, there were some points I agreed with, some points I disagreed with. Um, found an absolute stellar stat sheet of just how garbage our play calling was on defense. Oh, God. From PFF? Uh, no. This is just an absolute. Oops, sorry. PFF, Jesus Give me a second. Christ. I was on the wrong thing. Uh, oh, da, 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 da. Let me slide right it. past you. Here we go. Oh. 
Oh man, this kid knows how to build suspense. <laughs> or is not prepared. MSU on the there ground. There it is. <laughs> MSU on the ground. Average negative yards before contact. Wait, are we talking about offensive play calling? Because you said defense. I- I'm getting there. That was just the very first bullet point that I had on this. Oh, negative yards so we're just going contact. all over the place. Negative yards before contact. Now. Wolf. All right. <sighs> Past tendencies. Like blitz rate faced. Washington faced 15%. Okay. I'm following you so far. Yep. Okay. So that, what does that equate to? How many sacks do we have? Zero. Zero. Zero, Zero percent sacks. Pressure rate. Good, good shit, Alex. Pressure rate. Shitty. 12.5%. Zero sacks. Compared no. to uh, Washington hit 21. Oh. It had to be pretty high. At so basically this is mean Michigan State didn't blitz. Try to get home with four, mm-hmm. dropped everybody, and was still getting carved up. When you say it like that, that that's that was the game plan behind it. Was it wouldn't play the well, most vanilla for the first half. I don't think they wanted to get carved up. I don't no, think they, they, either. they were very comfortable giving up yards all the way to the red zone until, and then try to make a stand in the red zone. That was the plan. That was last year. We watched that for like the first uh, whatever games. Correct. It's disgusting. It was electric. <laughs> It's disgusting. Yards per pass attempt, 9.9. Pretty bad. Yards per pass, 9.9 for Washington. Pretty bad. Now, completion rate was only 60%. Mm. Still pretty good. Now, the adjusted completion rate. Okay. 70.8 for them. Oh, what, yeah, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> yep. You don't know either. <laughs> okay, passing yards versus zone You didn't coverage. even know what that meant. Yeah, adjust it. You, you adjust it from the previous uh, the previous lines. Adjusted, the yards dude. per attempt and the yards per pass. The total pass yards completion rate is just the regular, and then the adjusted completion rate based off of the yards per attempt and everything. Boom. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I'm just spitting facts here. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. I like You're it. building my point here. I know. I know. You're building yeah, something. You. Okay, I'm gonna actually go. Pass first man coverage, Washington on offense, okay. Michigan State on defense. Okay. Okay. Passing yards, 101. Completion rate, 54.5%. That's pretty low. Sounds Bad. like it was good. Yards per completion, though, yeah. damn near 17. Oh. However, so milk toast. Success rate was only 45%. Okay. Pretty low. Not bad. Risky. Now we'll go over to zone coverage. Okay. Passing yards, 281. Oh, no. That's Completion rate, 68%. Easy. Almost like nice. stealing candy from a baby. Yards per completion, 18.7. Mm. So even higher than man? Higher than man. Might as well just play man all game. Success rate, 63%. Mm. Explosive play rate. Now, what? <laughs> there is explosive play rate. I don't know on here if they... 16 plus yards. Is that an explosive play? Correct. That's what they define it as. Feels, feels right. <laughs> I can get behind that. Probably 17. Yards. 17% would be 32%. crazy. 32%. Holy <laughs> shit. That's outrageous. 32% third, of the plays in zone coverage are going for place. a Yes. We're in zone. Explosive. In zone, Alex. Yeah, but we were in zone half the game. Third and long. Our third and long. Was actually not bad. It's just they never got into third and long. I was gonna say third and long should be pretty good on that down. This leads how me many to plays a... do you think they got in third and long? Like they converted two. On? No, just total plays that they they participated in third and long. Two one and third and long. In what's their, what's in third their... and long considered? Third and third seven, and seven plus. Yeah, oh, two seven. one. I think I can remember both. No, it's a, it's more than that. It's nine. Nine. Oh, well, they probably converted on eight of them. No, they didn't. Well, they, the me, success rate was twenty-two percent. What's the overarching point of this, Evan? That we suck. That the defense, they were playing it ass backwards. You should have been rotating guys to like find a hot hand for the corner and played way more zone and blitzed the crap out of Penix. Wait, wait. Did you play more man or play zone? Play more man. You said so. Okay, play Did man I? blitz. Man blitz. man blitz. Play more man. I said rotate the guys to find the hot corner 
expected Calvary player Mar- Mar- well, staying with Marquis them. Lowry. <laughs> Answer. Injured. Couldn't play. Oh. And then Didn't you dress. needed a blitz. You had to get Penix off of off tilt, out of the pocket, and make a move. And we completely just said, no, we're going to stick to this. Made a move like two or tag of, of all time. What we did was we played eight yards off the ball in zone. Yeah. Pen- with rushed four or three. Penix take two steps, get the ball out in 1.2 no. seconds. Now, here's the question. This Easy is this time. is what it all leads to. Were the com- I hate talking about another man's job and his profession and how he feeds his family. Were the comments too far about Scotty Hazleton needing to be left out in Washington, or was it warranted? And where are you guys at with his... Should um, always bring a man role. home. Okay, thanks, Alex. Uh, I'm just going to get that my Then you just do it right on the field right before. No that man was left crazy. Behind. I cannot believe they fired him on the field after that. Wild. But, Evan... I mean, your thoughts were pretty vocal on Saturday while you were drinking. I don't know how your thoughts are now. He so loves I, them. <laughs> what do you think? You need to change things. Like I said at the beginning of the year, I don't think it's talent. It I really I really don't. You cannot tell me that Michigan State's secondary is the least talented unit in the entire country. Correct. It, you can't tell me that. A thousand percent scheme. And I don't know if, like... They see something where it's like we don't have enough pressure up front, so we have to play so many guys deep. We struggle tackling one on one, so we have to play extra guys in the pass coverage. But like this tendency of just the same old, same old, same old thing each time you play a big opponent that is capable of throwing the ball, and they do this carve us up. We don't change anything. Yeah. To me, it, to me, it, this is what it looks like. It looks like no, you go right. in and you just copy and print what you do from like <laughs> Michigan, same vanilla coverage. What you did for Purdue, same vanilla coverage. What you did for Ohio State, same. And now what you did for Washington. So you didn't change anything up from those, like the big games where you knew they were going to pass the ball no. more than 60% of the time. You didn't like delete. A sentence or add in a highlight. No, you didn't. Or do you different, didn't change like, any of the punctuation words. Punctuation yes. and indent in the paragraph. You just copy and paste. And it. I, I I don't want to say it was, but like I don't know if they got so blinded by Widmon that it was like, oh, he'll get home. That's terrible coaching. If that's the he case, didn't. he was doubled well, most of that game. Like Will Anderson. He was doubled most of the game. Leonard. And- Petrowski got hurt, so that hurts. And Slade didn't play. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I think, don't know. I mean, any other like stats you, you want to get, Alex? Any other stats sounds, you're looking for? It sounds like you want. I've read a lot of stats. I don't think that really drives home the point. It sounds like you guys want him to stay around, but just fix it. I don't think that's how I feel. Oh. Evans like I said, made, Evans way the way that, uh, how much talent, at someone. No, how much money has gone into the coaching? There has to you are hundred percent able to outbid like 95 percent of the universities for a defensive coordinator. You don't have to find one on the open market. You basically just go and pluck somebody from like a other power five school that's doing really well. You say you are a defensive coordinator now and you're gonna fix this. I'm not saying Ohio State. I'm not saying you have to get the best defense coordinator out there. We're not Alabama. Can't do that. But you have the ability to steal like another power five defensive coordinator. I have to get my hater takeout, which I do think has some merit. And I just kept thinking about it as people were just ragdolling Scotty Hazeltine around the internet. I didn't see a lot of Mel Tucker's name being mentioned. I'm glad that Mel took responsibility and called himself out because I kept thinking as a defensive backs coach, like a large chunk of this has to fall back on him because – I think we knew like this year he's he has his hand in the defensive backs at practice. I know he has to juggle a lot of things, but that's still his expertise. And when you have an expertise in that part of the ball, it's so atrocious. Like a lot of it has to go back on you as well. But Mel also has a resume of guys like going to the league. Like we know Mel is fully capable of coaching DBs. He's done it at well, both. We don't levels. know that. We don't know that at Michigan State yet. We don't. He's done it at uh, multiple programs, and but we don't know it at Michigan worked. State. <laughs> we just don't, I haven't seen it at Michigan I State. I just yet. wonder, scheme wise, maybe 
maybe Scotty's scheme works. Um, Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. <laughs> but he's just maybe it's too complicated for these dudes, and they can't figure it out. Maybe it's oh, like I've been coaching dumb. these eighth graders. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's not. It can't all be scheme. It can't all be skill. It has to be a mix of both. I'm just saying this. If you're going to sag off and play that, you can't get beat deep. So that happened one too many times. Well, well they, you're, you're, what would happen is they would be in a mostly like 90% zone and Chester Kimbrough would get isolated in a man-on-man matchup. And he is the worst corner I've ever seen in my life. And he just get burnt every time. Every time. Power rank him this game or Vincent Gray versus MSU 2020? Vincent Gray, MSU 2020. Okay, I just checking to see where it ranks. That's, I think it's pretty close. Well, different quarterback though. Like you have to. Chester yeah. played like eight snaps and gave up three fifty yard catches. Hmm. Um, Mel does need uh, to look in the mirror too. I'll be honest. With all he's that a defensive rip. guy. He's got to figure um, it out. What I wanted to say to some other people, I guess, that need to look in the mirror, that will be crucial for the season. A disturbing lack of physicality out of, out of a Michigan State football team in the offensive line. And the pass rush, which Evan already had talked about. The offensive line's been stats. bad for seven years. We said this um, last year. Yeah, but there's always usually, I mean, yes, more recently, no, but there's always like an NFL capable guy. No, like, dude, a, there has there, not been since 2015. A, okay, that's what I'm referring then to. Like, there's MSU offensive linemen in that the NFL. That was seven years ago. But I, when I, Grant grew up through middle school and high school, there you could always count on an MSU offensive lineman making it to the NFL. Now I can't count on that anymore. I can't. No, you can't. No, because they ran the ball 29 times for 42 yards, which quick math is 1.4 yards per carry, which is really bad. Awful. Um, and only one tackle for loss, zero sacks. So Alex tried to pull a fast one on us, Evan, and say they don't have big Samoans that are physical out in Washington. They did. They, they do have big Samoans, but they're physical. A lot of them. <laughs> they did have more than I expected. I'll say that. They just kept I, coming up, and I was like, Jesus, how many are there? I will say it was true, though. This was not your father's Washington team because that DeBoer offense of the pre snap motion, I thought I was drunk. I was like, what is going on? There's four guys spinning. They're all moving at once. How is this not an illegal shift? It was a pretty crazy offense. I think we should give credit to Washington, too. They played well, they had a good game plan, and they have talent. And Penix is good as much as I hate to say that. He That's gets it all, to admit. gets it out quick, and he's very accurate. Where were you last week? I, I didn't want to believe than it. You think. Last yeah. two points before we move on is two guys to also give credit to. Peyton Thorne absolutely silenced every single doubter in Spartan Nation. He's in a the country good with his performance. goddamn quarterback. Gritty. We should be grateful to have him. At one point, I thought he separated his left shoulder trying to truck stick a guy. And then I was like, oh, God, this is his season. And then he just kept playing and was fine. I'm like, wow, this guy is an absolute gamer. Um, so hats off to him. And then Alex's guy, the world's guy, Keon Coleman, stepped up in a huge way, just absolutely made redundant. Where does he rank place. on Michigan's team as a wide receiver now? Through With his performances, he would have to be one through this season, season if we're going off eye test what he's done. I knew it. This feels good. I, At least Keon's good. I'm not saying it's going to stay like that. He also got an offensive pass interference, which I told you was going to happen because he's that very physical. That was not a good call. It was both yeah, it was. very physical both ways. It's just if the Washington guy's helmet fell off. If that doesn't happen, that's a touchdown. Yeah, he illegal hands to the face of defensive back. <laughs> because the defensive back was mugging him. Either way, you can take your victory lap. Now, I'm saying that anyways. At the end of the season, I may not think he's still number one of the teams, but he's the number one receiver on Michigan State's own team. He's better than Jay and Reed so far through the season. Correct. I mean, I just remember you had Keon like seventh between the two teams combined. Because he hadn't played. Yeah, well, you can always project. You don't like that. I'm projecting Jeff Okuda to stink. I'm projecting Keon Coleman <laughs> to be an all-star. Um, okay. Our last preview, very brief, and for the Michigan fans. I will like, oh, not speak just, about this. I watched just, four you guys. Drives. You guys just talked about Michigan State the drives. whole entire time. Well, when a team loses, we're going to talk about them more. Two from each play. Team. A preseason, you're not going to talk about it a lot. The biggest thing about UM UConn that I came away with was that there's no night game at Iowa. So it's a noon kickoff, so we're good there. Um, Michigan should absolutely steamroll the Hawkeyes. The other points, good to see special teams have a good game. I think I said I wanted to see a special teams or defensive touchdown. Check that off. AJ Henning, Electric Factory. Alex hates him as a receiver, but he's a good shifty returner. And yeah, that's pretty fair to say. 
Lastly, this is a classic game where Blake Corum racks up a bunch of touchdowns. So at the end of the year, your numbers are a little bit more inflated than they normally are. He didn't still didn't have that many yards. Back. No, he just got a bunch of goal line carries and had five <laughs> touchdowns, which is just cool to have. Also, that would have been a nice one for Donovan Edwards to pad some stats, but he was hurt. The question we have very quickly, are you and are Evan and Alex scared of JJ starting? This is a question from a fan. Anonymous fan on Google. No, not Dot yet four. because he hasn't played anything. He hasn't anything. done anything that I need to be worried about yet. Let's see him play real t- football teams, not. But one game I watched him live, he fumbled in the biggest situation and cost his team the game. Twice. Recovered one. Oh, yeah. Or did nope, it go out of bounds? Got out of bounds. Because oh, we yeah, kicked yeah. it out of bounds. Two fumbles yeah. in the one game I've seen him play live in person. Yeah. So, Alex, yeah, did, you said you weren't sure if you are going to tune in. You watched a little bit of this game? Unfortunately. I wanted to see because Evan mentioned the Penn State quarterback being the starter. Guy already had lost his job before this game. So <laughs> I turned the TV on. UConn's coming out, and it's a different kid who's like a two-star from Florida. So like a decent program I think he was from. What did you think of the eye test of the skunk bears? Just seeing him on the field move around. What did you think? Uh, all I could, The only thing I could focus on was how terrible UConn was. Could okay. not get over the fact. I was literally watching. I'm like, these kids are like a high school team. I Fair. couldn't believe it. Fair. Nothing. Yeah, nothing really stood out. I like then, I said, I didn't watch very much. Fair. So now we move to previews. We'll stick Michigan um, because it's the least exciting game of the weekend. Again, a little bit better because it's Big Ten play. That's not saying much because it was you know a preseason schedule. So we play. We'll go with spread first. Evan, think about the announcers. Minus seventeen spread for Michigan. Channel sixty four and a half over Fox, under. Big noon kickoff. Fox at noon. Big noon kickoff. Oh, then it's Gus and Joel. You're just stealing Evan's bit. It's okay. yeah, big noon kickoff. What do you mean? That and is gross. That's the best game for them. It's the brand. Oh my god. I mean, there, there must be. It, it must be a bad week. Our game's better wasn't than that. wasn't the craziest. It was a stat like the Michigan Colorado State game on week one was like the fifth watch game in the country, and there was like a bunch of good games on that weekend. Jesus Christ. So, and also, I think Michigan Iowa was going to be big noon kickoff as well because it's on noon again on Fox. I think it's just back to back big noon. Yeah, we're in the same slot next week. So, um, all right, Evan, who's going to be the sideline reporter for that game? Is Gus even going to call the game? Because he left last week early. He didn't call the second half of the Nebraska Oklahoma game because of a medical condition. Jesus, Whoa. hope he's okay. He's slated, he's slated to call it, but that is prayers up to Gus. Um, yeah, because Brady Quinn was like calling the game up from the sideline, I think, and somebody else it was Joel Clad, Brady Quinn, and somebody else. And maybe they kept Jenny Taft is on the sideline. There Jenny you go. Taft is on the sideline. Jenny Taft. I couldn't think of her name. The all-American girl, as Gus says every single time he introduces her. So, about Maryland, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts. My three quick thoughts are, one, Alex is going to hate this take, but this is how dumb my brain works in football. And it's, like, not true. It's kind of a joke, but it's serious. What, what do you think I'm going to say? I don't know. It's just going to be dumb. Make me angry. It's dumb. <laughs> I can't separate the Tagovailoa's. So, like, when I see Tua have the game that he did, I'm like, oh, Talia is going to be sweet. I'm yeah, Saturday. That's so <laughs> stupid. That is so I- dumb. No, Evan knows what I'm talking about. Like this talk of a little bit. A hundred percent. I saw Tua light it up and I was like, oh, we might oh, be in a little bit of trouble on Saturday. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what a joke. Oh, so that man. um second, they have a legit NFL wide receiver, Rakeem Jarrett. My guy personal. If we had my guys, I told you about this guy last year when we did the MSU Maryland recap. I was like, that guy's sweet a dog. hood. Hoodie guy, yeah. even when it's hot out. I was like, that guy's a dog. It turns out, yeah, he got all the buzz this year in the offseason. He's going to be drafted in the NFL. So Michigan will have to have a plan for him. Do I think Maryland will score a little bit? Yes, I think they have a solid offense, but they gave up 520 yards to SMU. So I think Michigan will do whatever they want offensively. Behind JJ, they scored like 56 last year with Kate at the helm. Uh, so I think they'll be fine. Also, prayers up to Cade McNamara. Got injured, going to be out a few weeks. I hope he's okay. Um, so yeah, Maryland's played Charlotte, Buffalo, and SMU, and they've given up over 900 yards passing between those three teams. That is horrendous. I think we're their close defense 900 too. I think their defense is worse than ours, Evan. Oh, um, and that's saying quite a bit after what we just saw. So yeah, Maryland might score 21. 21. Yeah, 
Michigan might score 60. Now, so. downside, and I hate even giving these guys a lot of day. These are Alex's buddies, the um, message board trolls that have Whoa. made their way onto Twitter. These are not my uh, buddies. There are rumors that Eric All may have suffered a season-ending injury that we don't know about yet publicly. Dude, um, that would be not good. It would be really bad. Be very bad. Um, the only thing I'm basing it off of is someone said, like, really bad news and then deleted the tweet and then did like eyeball emojis and people are like what are you talking about and then someone said someone took a screenshot of luke schoonmaker and said this guy will be on the mackie award list like inferring and then someone's like what are you talking about and then like eric all don't we all know and i was like oh god what, what I just, happened i was more groaning at the fact that uh some loser f- like feels the need to like tweet eyeballs about a season ending injury to like Correct. get clout and I hate these people that won't just say it. Like, if you're not confident enough to say that you've heard this and he is going to be out, and I don't know, like, just don't say anything and wait for the team to say it. Like, a normal person, don't, like, be, like, eyeballs, deleting tweets, someone's injured. Like, just, just... Yeah, I would agree. But last time this happened, and I didn't believe it was Isaiah Livers, and that turns out that was very true. So I get nervous when I see these things because usually they're accurate. Unfortunately. So I hope people are lying and we get look back and I'm like, oh, that was stupid. Just like Jaden Reed's not playing Saturday. Really? Eyeballs. No, I have no idea. It's completely. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, good transition, Alex. MSU versus Minnesota. Plus two and a half. Home dogs, Michigan State barking. 50 and a half over under. It's a 330 BTN kick. Evan, who is announcing this game? Oh, God. Butler Pride. Alex looks it up. No. You gotta be quiet until he at least guesses. My guess is Butler Pride and Matt Millen. I don't think Kevin Kuga does it anymore because he does the Fox baseball on the weekends. Well, that's not Butler Pride, Evan. I don't know who Butler Pride is. Well, that's Grant, Grant's mistake. good personal friends with this guy. Oh, my bad. I don't know any of the BTM. <laughs> legit. Sure. Legit. legit, Grant knows this guy and has talked to him. I believe that. I'm not <laughs> disputing that. And you know him. You know who he is. You I know, know his I voice know in second. The games. All right, ready? <laughs> yep. Wait. Predictions for Michigan, Maryland. Uh, Maryland. I did the math. Is that Michigan, right? Yeah. Yep. Over they under. Don't what? We don't. We don't leave the state until October. Yeah. Over That's under is sixty-four and a half. Wow. Forty-eight twenty-one. Hammer mm. the over. I'll say forty-three <laughs> nineteen. Ew, dude! Your numbers are so gross. Every he's week. doing it on they purpose kick a field now. In the first half, and then they go score a touchdown, go for two, get it. Score a touchdown, go for two, get it. Um, fifty-two to twenty. Remedy. That's a nice. That is oh, a dude. nice score. Thank you. Yeah. All You're right. Welcome. Brandon Godden and Joshua Perry Brandon are your announcers Godin. for Michigan Madden State, Legend. Minnesota. I like Brandon Godden. It's really good. Too. The best I don't BTN like Joshua announcer. Perry. I don't know who Josh Perry is. He's the Ohio State like linebacker the that's in the linebacker. BTN, and they're trying to make him do everything, and he's like, he's way out of bounds, bro. He says stuff that just makes no sense. He, he starts talking, and then he like, <laughs> like forgets he's talking. And he's just rambling on, like trying to sound smart. Like, dude, just cut it off. Just cut it off. <laughs> All right, I'll be tuned in for that. I have an important question about announcers before we continue. That okay. this is a listener question from my dad. Doesn't know how to submit listener questions. I oh guess. God, Garrett, it's 2022. Yes, you do. <laughs> It is, it was like a text, you your name in. It was a text your- to me, and he said, you should talk about this on your podcast. Yes, so, first of all, Here do you, you guys think Kirk Herbstreet talks too much? He doesn't talk enough. No, I don't think he does. I want him to break down talk like, every much. single play like after it happens. Dan Orlowski doesn't talk to- enough. Mm. Dan, I don't need to hear Dan Orlowski as much as I do. I don't like Dan Orlovsky as much as any. No one does as much as Evan. <laughs> then he I like, says, "I like when he gets really excited about things because then I get excited." Then he says, "I can't stand Herb Street. He talks too much. Whatever." So that's just a bad opinion. take. And then he says, "Who is the best crew announcer crew in football?" This is tough because there's a lot of reshuffling. And he gave his. It doesn't have to be college only. His is an NFL crew. His is Joe Buck, Troy Aikman, which I also that, really like them a lot. That's my favorite. I think it's mine as well. So he's way off on his Herb Street take. But Evan, who is your favorite crew? Um, 
I don't really like any of the NFL guys. I think Joe Buck and Troy Aikman are so vastly overrated that they just want to do cowboy games nonstop. Just something about do they their pick voices, that? man. I really like it. They no, definitely they don't, don't. To pick that because Troy got upset last year. That's why you left Fox. Oh, true. Um, I really like Herb Street. But favorite crew, Evan. I understand that. I'm getting there, Alex. You got to pick a guy, and then you have to go off of that. I like Kirk Herb Street a lot too, but I. I, didn't I like don't Chris like Reese Davis when, when he fills Right in. when he replaced Brent Musburger, but Chris Fowler has grown on me, and he's had some really good calls. I like Chris Fowler, the guy. I like him, so, as, a, I like him as calling games. He's um, awesome. I'll give Evan more time, I think. There's some thoughts in my head that I was thinking about. Mine would like be, why. Be, honestly, would be between Gus Johnson, Joel Klatt, and then Herb Seri and Chris Fowler. Something about Joel rubs me the wrong way. Because he likes Michigan. Just... <laughs> I like I like now, I like him sometimes though. That's another thing. The only problem is if Brad he just gets so and, offended. If Brad and uh Gary mm. Gary like did All-time more crew. games and were like on like public figures, I think they would be like the number one crew that everybody likes. But they're well, only yeah. they're only picking to one fan base and that's SEC. It's only one game a week. They're not on any TV shows, you're not talking nonstop. The best was Alan Chris, and then they broke up. I did like that Alan Chris. That was my number one. I never liked them. I like Chris now, Collinsworth, and I know everybody hates him. I love Chris Collinsworth. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I just I do like him. He's I good. just love him sitting good back at his job. Now, here's a guy, and then he just like, <laughs> dives into it. I love it. Um, Al and Kirk have the potential to become one, but they're just still so new. I got to feel it out more. What's so good about Joe and Troy, which I love, because you guys know I really don't like the guys get way too animated when something's not that cool, and that is your Steve Levy's and Tessa Tours. Steve <laughs> Levy is Steve Levy is one of the worst couple Dude, he's so god awful. <laughs> he's so, god awful. I really enjoy. Oh my god, the, Sean McDonough is my favorite. So oh yeah, <laughs> but so he he's with uh, Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge. Blackledge. Like Sean yeah, McDonough, that's, that's a good like, crew. It could that's be a good crew. That's a be, mid crew. <laughs> it's a good crew. It's, it's Sean McDonough is number one for me, no matter what. I appreciate that. About Sorry, you right to die. interrupt you. Go ahead. What I was going to say is like Troy and Joe, like they let things breathe and they don't talk as much as a lot of people. Like Joe will just shut up and like let the crowd carry it. And like, wow, like this is an intense situation going on because you can hear the stadium. I like and that then, part. And then when like things happen, they don't like – poop their pants because they've seen so many like joe buck has seen the craziest things in sports so like it really has to be <laughs> insane for him to like go crazy and he does like the minneapolis miracle he went cr- he got loud and then he shut up and let the stadium talk and like the world series with the cubs and indians he's done so much where like nothing it has to be really good for him to be like wow which i enjoy like i don't need jim nance freaking out at, or uh, sorry tony romo freaking out at oh, every single dude. point of a football game tony romo ruined jim nance my God, Tony, Tony Romo, Romo was horrendous. <laughs> Tony Romo ruined the Chiefs Bills game for Alex single handedly. I was so upset watching that game with Tony Romo calling that game. He said the game was over with like six minutes left. Gak I'll never forget moron. it. Sorry. Anyways, that's the announcer breakdown of the week. Keys to the game: How does Michigan State beat Minnesota? Okay, before they we gotta get play to that, defense, Alex, Alex. Before we well, we got to score more points than that, that would be pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Before we get to that, Chris Alvin question out for the year for Minnesota. Uh-huh. Leading wide receiver for Minnesota. I'm aware. He it's has right. 11 catches, 214 yards, and a touchdown on the year. That's good. Okay, that is one-third of Minnesota's catches on the year. They've only completed 38 passes on the year. They are primarily run-heavy, RPO. We're going to inside zone you to death, and then we're going to hit a slant behind you. That's That's basically our bread and butter. That's because PJ Flag doesn't know X is enough. Yes. So he just What's has the to trivia do that. question? This feels like we're building question. into a trivia question. No, I'm not giving you a trivia question. I'm just giving Alex, you some what a baseline mystery. background knowledge of an average RTB. I, I know what Minnesota does, Evan. You're an avid fan. Alex, I'm not talking to you. I talk to our listeners. I don't right. care yeah, Evan, about you. I have you. a question. Who Forgot. are you rooting for in this game? Um. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit colder. I might wear a Michigan State sweatshirt. Who knows what I'm wearing underneath? Evan, 
please. I'm not signing you into the game. I'm not scanning your ticket in. A hundred percent chance if Michigan State loses. If Michigan State loses, Evan will be like, "Yeah, go go first." A hundred percent, he will say that. I I know. I, Grant, I'm gonna I be so that. pissed when I, I see say, that text in the five one seven crew. I will say, ball, I will punch you right in your mouth when I that will happens. say, "Well, somebody's got to win the West." Okay, so that's it. better. Somebody has to win the West. I do like Michigan State's chances. Boat, Minnesota oh, doesn't goodness. throw the ball. I think that's gonna be our biggest weakness. It's literally our biggest weakness, and you're gonna try to tell an offense that doesn't want to throw the ball to throw the ball more when they just lost their leading wide receiver. And they're on the road for the first time all year. Now, Minnesota has one of the best defenses since they got the new defensive coordinator. I'm saying, like, top 10 in every single category. They played nobody. No, Alex, this is dating back to, like, over a year and a half ago when this Fine. new defensive coordinator came in. Fine. That's what It's still I'm impressive about. not to let bad teams score. So Colorado would get blown out by Akron. I just want to get that off my chest. That's how bad Colorado, Colorado is. Colorado's so bad that the athletic director had to come out and say, we know we suck, but please donate to the athletic department is basically what the message is. They're said. horrible. <laughs> the good news with the game plan, as we know through Michigan State's history, they've had a knack for being able to stop the run, which did still hold true against Washington, who has some big guys up front. Now they're more of a pass-heavy offense. We saw that. But they had 36 attempts for 106 yards, 2.9 per carry. Um, is what they gave up against Washington. So if they can repeat and that. And a 30-yard carry on the last play that they had. 30-yard carry on the last so play. So it was actually if, even better than that. If they can repeat something like that, then they should win this game. Evan makes a good, great point about the defense. I am very curious to see Michigan State's offense against probably the best defense they've faced thus far this season. Yes. I would That's like it. to know, Evan, from you, Minnesota Gopher fan, how are no, the Minnesota, not Minnesota Gopher fan, PJ Fleck fan. Oh, gross! Cor- how do you? F- how are Minnesota's corners? How do they match up with the if Jaden Reed plays a Jaden Reed, Keon Coleman, Trey Mosley trio with Daniel Barker running routes as well? How do they I match up against that? Many defensive backs can match up that well with them. You're gonna have to have dudes that can be able to run man. Can they run man against us and be successful? This year they haven't ran as much because they haven't needed to. I mean they are a. Ben don't break, but they actually do create more turnovers than like an average defense would. That's why they're in the top 10 categories. They create turnovers. Thanks to Michigan State's awful defense, anytime I hear Ben don't break, I automatically assume that their defense is hot garbage. So that that's good news that you said it like that. Um, my last thing, this is oh, chop at Grant. Um, so Grant said for all the listeners that if he started a safety this week for Michigan State, he – would intercept Tanner Morgan. That was how it started. Um, then backtrack to the entire season. He would make an interception for Michigan State. Um, so despite how ridiculous that is, because Grant would never be able to do that, he's very slow and very small and would get blown up. Tanner Morgan is cheeks. So despite all Grant's terribleness, I agree with him. Tanner Morgan did beat a fourth-ranked Penn State team before, two years ago. Tanner Morgan is the reason that their best receiver is injured because he threw a ball that was bad. Tanner Morgan got Tyler Johnson and Rashad, Rashad Bateman. Bateman to the NFL. A play they got, seven. They got him to a winning season. <laughs> Tanner Morgan's buns. That's I all. forgot where I saw the post, but I saw that like Minnesota had – a very highly rated PFF cornerback. So I know they at least have one yes, they do. player. They're I know they have all... a ginormous offensive line. Okay, Alex, this is how good their defense has been. Uh, no, I'm not saying that they have really not played anybody that good. Okay. Michigan State, good how many total all. tackles do you think they have on the year? Total tackles. Ooh, yeah. Everybody on their team, total tackles they have on the year. I don't know. That's a, that's a weird stat. I don't know. I'm, I'm just asking. Just asking. Just throw out a number. No wrong answer. Three games. Oh, uh, 146. 226 total tackles Michigan State has had. It's had right. to make. Now, how many total tackles do you think Minnesota's defense has had to create? 101. 129. 100 oh. less tackles. Yeah, Evan, our defense is garbage. We're comparing garbage to decent. I'm just letting them know because everybody talks about Minnesota's offense, but Minnesota's defense is very good. 
You're going to so, see some guys out there that be like, there's no way this linebacker is going to be able to run with our running back, and he's going to do it. I'm ready for this. And we didn't even talk about the dog, the best player. Ooh, best player in the game, Mo Ibrahim. This is going to be an absolute force. He's got 464 current. yards on the ground already this year. Alex he's a very good running best. back. You don't think he's the best player in the game? No. <clears throat> At the end of the game, we won't think that he was the best player in the game. He's the best well, player on the field when he's on the field. Thank you. Yes. Fair. Defense, Boy, you say Peyton garbage. Thorne's better than Mo Ibrahim. Means more. But it's hard to it's hard matters to compare more. positions. It's yeah, it's it's not. He's the I best running back in this game by far. To Michigan State because you saw what Minnesota still was capable to run the ball last year when Mojave Ibrahim was out. You just butchered his name right there. Mojave Ibrahim. That's Isn't his it first Mo? name. It's not Mo. It's Mohammed. I call oh, him. Mo I thought you combined like his entire first and last no. name together. I was like, wow, that is something. He's Mebrahim. Mabram. If you were to row the boat, you would know that he is. it's Muhammad. The most not, common name. I'm in, not a row the boat guy. The most common name. <laughs> so I don't know what you want from Muhammad. <laughs> Good, super bad reference. Evan. I got that. Funny. Um, predictions. <laughs> predictions. Must win meters for both. Or must no win that this week. Must win. I'm going fire upon loss, and that's just fully directed at Scotty Hazelton. Holy shit. <laughs> Our old line could get some too. Set him out as well. It's weird. Wow. USC wanted him, Evan. I, he so must jobs are on the line. Hey, can Lincoln Riley take him over. back? Can Listen, Lincoln Riley call look, him and take him? Michigan State's defense looks like it did against Washington, and Minnesota lights us up through the air with Tanner Morgan's bum ass and not their wide receiver. Yeah, it's fire Scotty Hazleton immediately after. He what doesn't just, get to leave. What if they just run for 350 and they don't throw it, but they still light it up on the ground? They run for 350 and we lose? Yeah. Yeah, I think disgusted. if they run for 350, you're going like, to lose Grant, it. Like you, said, like, last year, you said it last year at some point that like when a team just runs the ball down your throat, there's nothing worse. There's yeah. nothing if, worse. If that would be Minnesota, degrading, but I couldn't justify firing. So put me in the <laughs> middle of firing and must win. Well, Because it depends what, on how the game Mine's, mine's a must win. You're at Michigan, home, you have to bounce back, and this is your first Big Ten game. Well, you have to go undefeated at home. You have to go undefeated at home. A oh, must win not. and a fire someone in a game that you're a, ro- a home dog in. That is open as a favorite. The, Minnesota the is one of the best teams. Have pushed it out. Minnesota is one of the best teams in the West. It's not saying a lot, but it technically, right now, right now, you can say they're the favorite to win the West. That says, and if nothing. Alex says he's going to be pissed, <laughs> says nothing. If we don't win the Big Ten. You have to beat the best team on the Hell other side. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be furious if we lose this game. The sky will be falling. I will be so freaking must, out, angry. So this is a must win because it's the best team on the West right now. Evan, I oh said it's God. bigger than a must win. I'm I don't so know what we're arguing about. This is fire at someone if we lose. Okay. Important. Michigan's is the same way. Fire upon loss. No. It'd no. be a joke if they lost to Maryland. It would be, but you still have everything that you want in front of you. You just got to win every game. Ew, we cannot allow this Michigan football team to not have a fire pond loss in this game. <laughs> They're the Big Ten champions. You have a Heisman quarterback, and you're playing Maryland. Maryland. Well, remember, Evan and I respect Maryland. You don't respect Maryland. Yeah, yeah and I gave you guys a Maryland. stat. Michigan State's lost one time to Maryland. I don't know if Michigan ever has. Well, did you see the game Tua had on Sunday? Yeah, his brother... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jackass. As much and I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Mel Tucker, what he said. And I'm I, I think he's a smart guy. He got me to read about neutral thinking, which I've totally forgotten about. I don't apply that in my life at all. I ride the up I'm and not down allowed emotional to, waves uh, now. Say that to Evan, he gets mad about that. I actually wanted to no, open up the you Washington. You can say it still, but you can't say it when we're down twenty-two nothing or twenty-eight nothing to Ohio State or somebody. Just getting after. I was rock. going to say it when it got to twenty-two to eight. You could right have, before Washington I scored I a half, but I was like, no, Evan minutes. would get so pissed if I did this, so I'm not gonna. And I bet <laughs> I if I did, wanted, we would have won. I wanted to start the Washington recap with like. Alex, tell Evan why everything's okay with Michigan State football because you're neutral thinkers. Go. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I still feel but okay about the team. What I'm saying is I, Melis Tucker showed me a lot last year. Peyton Thorne showed me a lot last game. But this is our last straw. I'm going to ride last with the straw. Spartans the last in this game. This that. is the last dance. If you this. blow this and you lose this game, I will 
when the gut decision happens, I'm going to pick the other team when I think it's a toss-up. But right now, I'm going to say Michigan State squeaks out a disgusting Big Ten football buffet, 19-16 to Spartans. Throw up in my mouth. I got 23-21. You go round numbers for this game? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's more realistic. Stick to your script, dude. That's why we write it. That is my script. You would have to give a In bad blogs, number. People do weird things, Alex. They just randomly go for two for no reason. Um, There's no way this game gets to 50 points. As hold on, Vegas I'm finding my score. No found found it. That's what mine is. Found it. Yeah, Evan and I are both well under 50. Yep. Oh, shit, I can't find it. Well under 50. I can't find it. It's Alex is actually podcasting. reading his script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The script. All right, basically, I was just going to predict. So this reminds me of when Michigan State lost to Notre Dame after a surprising 2-0 start. Then they played Notre Dame at home, got blown out. It was awful. Everyone thought the sky was falling, thought this team wouldn't make any jumps. And then we beat Iowa at home as an underdog. I'm comparing it to that game. Brian Lewerke's year that they were good. That was they a very good three. game. Felton Davis game. And it turned the entire Joe season around. Um, so that's how I expect this game to go. I don't know what the score was for that. I was trying to find it. Couldn't find it. I think it, it was like 17-14, 17-10, Michigan State. If they score 28 points, I'll take my hat off to them. I think they really found something in the passing game. And it's called just pass it. Don't worry. It's actually it. called being down 22 nothing after the first six minutes of the game. <laughs> Definitely helps, but it, you should just never run the ball because you can't do it. Offensive line's bad. Just throw it every play. We'll see what Jay right. Johnson's cooking up in that kitchen of his. <laughs> Probably a bunch of flea remember, flickers Evan, when they send on full-out blitz. Remember, <laughs> your team scored zero points. Um, If I had the talent like Michigan State's offense, I would They would not. score three. Sorry. I would score more than that. I actually Please. think Evan. I think Evan would do really well with Michigan State's talent. I don't Thank know you. what he would try to do, though. You'd be so disappointed in that offensive line. Yeah. Well, you, 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 like you'd that. stick to your guns. You'd just run inside zone every play. Be no better than Dave Warner. <laughs> jet sweep um, to this boundary. <laughs> Keyshawn Martin, jet sweep every play. If I had Keyshawn Martin, dude, they'd be a different story. <laughs> uh, I need Keyshawn Martin and RJ Shelton. <laughs> so random. Off the rails. Last game. Oh my you... god, we still have another game to talk about. Yeah, all, all oh, you Grant, I have a game. I want to play with you. Because oh, you're the okay. most realist out of all of wait, us. For, wait, this is for very you, important for Evan. For all you football sickos, buckle up. This is a two hour bonanza. <laughs> um, Evan, just so you know, Clemson Wake Forest, important game to my family. Sean yeah. McDonough, Todd Blockledge. Oh. At time. noon. Can watch it at the tailgate. So oh, Sam yes. Hartman's like whole like health scare. Is he back? He's back. He's, good now? He's back. He played last watched, week. Watch Wake Forest Liberty, you know, diehard Demon Deacon fan. Barely. Okay, I'm going to play a game. Can't wait to watch you bandwagon to them when you get blown up by Roll the Boat. It's I'm really curious about Grant's opinion Family because he's money a realist there. on this more than Alex's. Okay, Alex, you can give your opinion as well. But mine matters more. Correct. According okay. to Evan. What is this? Okay, like? currently, Compliance. as I counted, I did my math. There are 16 teams at one and one. <laughs> okay. So we're going to play. Are the Lions better than this team? And we're How come my opinion doesn't line. matter in this? Oh, Alex, I said you can give it, but I value Grant's more because he's more of a realist on the, on the teams. Fine. You thought Carson Wentz was okay. <laughs> well, he's good statistically. <laughs> you bought a Jared Goff jersey. It's called supporting your team, Evan. <laughs> Something okay, all bad. fans my do. Bad. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yep. Steelers. Better. Yes, no quarterback. Browns. Better. Steelers, Steelers with Kenny Pickett, we're worse than. Okay. Brown no, Grant, this is Ast- yes or no. Ast- Brown's Ast- better. I'm saying currently at the state of the teams right better. now. Brown's Brown's better, better, yes. Browns were better. Vikings. No. No. Bears. Yes. Yes. Ravens. No. No. Patriots. Yes. yes. Jets. Yes. Yes. Saints. No. No. Their defense would maul us. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Jared Goff or Jameis Winston currently right now on September 21st, 2022? Jared Goff. Wow, you've really changed your tune on Jared Goff. You guys love him now. This is great to see. No, I don't love no, him. I'm just, just comparing quarterbacks. Jared yeah, Goff is Tom a, Brady. We have a better quarterback <laughs> going into that game. <laughs> Super Bowl quarterback Jared Goff. <laughs> Tom 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 Jared Goff has been better than Tom Brady. I'll take the lie downs over the Jags. 
I will, but the Jags impress me. Sneaky. Did you say sneaky or sneaky? <laughs> sneaky. Oh, Colts funny. stink, though. <laughs> we would. I would do bad things to have their linebacking core. Oh. Who? Yeah. Chargers. Not or worse than no. Come on. Yeah, it's don't, maybe you just there's a hypothetical out there. I don't know. Seahawks. Better than better. Gino bad. DK Metcalf. 49ers. Worse. Worse. Broncos. Grand Iron lockstep on this. Worse. We'd beat them right now. God, you just l- hate Russell Wilson so much. They that almost lost to judgment. the Texans, and they have the worst coach in the NFL going. Cowboys. Wow. We'd Worse. beat. So Grant's more lose. confident than me, Evan. You think the last one be the slappy. is the Packers. We'd worse. By way worse still. Not way worse, but we'd lose. Guys, our defense still sucks. Do we know that? Yeah, but no one can stop So right us now running. you both agree that we're better than seven of the 15 teams. Grant was said nine. And then you said Holy we're worse sh- than the Cowboys? I did. I Alex this, this loves because I forgot Cooper Rush is the quarterback. Alex right loves now. Michael Parsons, so he has to like ride oh, Parsons because yes, he can't forget. I, so I told you we should have drafted Michael Parsons in that in that mock draft. I told you guys. I told yeah, Panay, uh, Panay's good. Panay's good. Yeah. We're doing a mock draft for God. Turns damn, out so. Rashawn Slater, who we drafted, was pretty fucking good too. Okay, so, so seven and nine teams are saying we're better than that. Currently at one and one. Yep. Grant just said we're a top like ten team in the in the league. In like NFL power rankings around the league, I don't know if you read those lists. We're like top fifteen in a lot of lists. I saw. Like we're good. It's the first good. time in probably like four years. We're good for now. <laughs> um, but this is a massive game. This game is on Fox at one p.m. We are plus five and a half dogs on the road. Fifty three and a half over under. Who's calling this game? Oh. I was just gonna look it up. I didn't know if you had that it's ready. Not Kevin Burkhart. If you guys think hard enough, you should get it. Is it? Well, actually, I guess that doesn't make sense. It's uh, yeah, it's the that doesn't back. make sense at all. It's Goose or Gus. Or There's a connection, but Darryl. I was thinking. Oh, it's Greg Jennings. What? Nope. It's a realize. guy you're you're gonna be familiar with over the course of the weekend. Minnesota related. It's Brandon Gordon again. Oh, with wow. Brady Quinn. Wow, Gordon and Brady Quinn are calling it. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> and you know what? In honor of that, I thought I'm going to release, I'll go dig it up, and I will post on our social media feed the article I did with Brandon Gordon when I was a big J journalist at Butler, because this is Brandon Gordon week. This is what this Brandon week is. Brandon Gordon week. If you're a Michigan State Detroit Lions fan, you're going to hate this guy or you're going to love this guy by the end of this week, and there's no Just go to the Michigan State game, so by the time you watch the Lions game, you're like, yeah, man, I love this guy. True. I do like Brandon Gordon, though, even if we lose. I it won't like be his him. fault. I think he's a good announcer. Does a good job. Um... Massive game. I'm curious your guys' thoughts going into this game. What do you think? How do you see it playing out? Confidence? Nervous? I feel sh- that- super shitty about it. Yeah. Every- it's, it's the whole, like, Minnesota played so bad. Lions it's- played so yeah. well. How is it going to yeah. bounce back? And I just see us just laying. I see us laying an egg, but it's not going to be like a Matt Patricia egg where we don't score a point and we don't move the ball. I think it's just going to be like a let down, lose by like two scores. It'd be like, okay, this team isn't as good as we thought. And it's just like the whole roller coaster of emotions week by week. Yeah, I feel like a 17 nothing hold to start the game is probable. And you're just like, oh, and Justin Jefferson has like a 65 yard touchdown. I don't think touchdown. Minnesota's defense is that good. Their secondary, I think, is weak. Their front seven, They however, shut down Rodgers week one. Bad receivers, though. Christian Watson did drop a touchdown. First he, he, a touchdown he shut down first. himself. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think. This is opposite of what Alex thinks. So something to keep an eye on. I have a weird feeling that like we're gonna blow it. No, the line. Yeah, the Lions will come out hot because oh, short awesome. short week of rest for Minnesota. Oh, but then they'll like hit a hit a switch in the second half. Like, dude, we can't lose again. Boom, turn it on, and like we'll lose it down the stretch. Is how I foresee the game playing out. A huge factor is going to be our health update. Um, the lines are very banged up. That's no surprise to anyone. It sounds like more guys are getting back. We need Hutchinson to be like 90% healthy. We need Swift to be like 90% healthy. We need Ragnow back. Um, but do we? It. And we need we need a Warrior back. No, we do for this team. This, well, is, Harris, this is not. Great pick, great tackler, awful in coverage. He will get cooked if he's starting. We just. We need guys back that can play because this is not Carson Wentz Commanders. 
Yeah, we just got a slightly above average Carson Wentz and Kirk Cousins. Just uh, this Sorry, feels like an Adam me. Thielen game. I just wanted to get that out there in case he has a huge game. I'm thinking that for I put him in some trade offers this week in fantasy, and then I pulled him because I'm like, you know, he's probably at least to have a hundred yards. He this always game. scores a touchdown against us. Would Al- be Alexander Madison usually has a massive day against the Lions because Dalvin Cook never plays. So I'm a little nervous that Dalvin Cook is going to go bananas. <laughs> the biggest thing on defense, and this is a storyline I'm watching for the whole season, because obviously week one was tough. But Jalen Hurts is a dog. So write that off. Evan yeah, he, about Evan, wow. him in a way. Great football player. Um, he learned how to throw, which is a huge part of the NFL. Yeah, he's, uh, he's at a, least in week two he did. He didn't throw that good against us. He just but he's a I have a theory. I think our pass rush is gonna be pretty solid against non mobile QBs. Cause like with those effort sacks from Hutchinson. So I think that will play into our favor again because no one has ever accused Kirk Cousins of being a mobile quarterback. So I think we're going to be able to get in and around there and maybe wreak some havoc, but I don't I don't like our chances. I feel pretty not good, yeah. On the flip side, if they win, though, Kool-Aid, serve it up. Kool-Aid. You're 2-1. Oh, wow. Kool-Aid. Down the throat. It'll, be, it'll remind me of when Golden Tate scored the game-winning touchdown at Minnesota. That was when you're like, wow, this team is awesome. Team didn't win anything, by the way. That's how bad our (laughs) fandom is. (laughs) All right. Predictions for the game, and then we'll wrap this thing up. 38-28 Vikings. God, that's high scoring. But that's our defense. That's our offense, offense. Alex. What do you say, Alex? I haven't said. I'm just letting you go. You got to think all these crazy – uh, getting into the 30s has got to stop at some point. So maybe we just say it's 28-25 Vikings. Damn, so the touchdown streak's going to end. What's the touchdown streak? It's like <laughs> 13 quarters in a row of a touchdown. Yeah, yeah it's got to end at some point. I don't think it ends today. The last two, three games. You guys both predict a loss? Yep. Yep. Well, someone's got to predict a win. I said that going into the year. Oh, they don't have to. Alex. 31-28, game-winning field goal at Minnesota. The Kool-Aid is fully drank. Wow. I'd be chugging it. Oh, oh my God, Kool-Aid. it'd be awesome. I want Kool-Aid this weekend. Because we'd probably, we'd probably be the top of the division because there's a chance. We are Bay tied for the division right now. No. Green Bay. Minnesota has an NFC one. North victory. So they're the number one in the division. It doesn't matter. It does. We'd... I think Green Bay might lose to Tampa Bay because they always struggle with them. So I think we could be at the top of this division if we win this game. Who the Bears well, we would be regardless if we win, Grant. Just doesn't matter who the, that. Doesn't matter who the Bears play to lose. Oh, actually, the Packers beat the Bears. Never mind. Bears stick. Um, and I will acknowledge, long listener Cody with a K, we did see your question. We're just not going to get to that in a two-hour and 15-minute show. We will get to that potentially next week. I didn't week see when. your question. What was it? He wants us to do the new record predictions for MSU, U of M, and the Lions. So we did do the Lions, kind of. And you didn't we'll do, do your 40-pound kettlebell question. Yeah, we'll uh, get to that next week as well. That's fun. That's a good question. <laughs> Seems directed um, that, at someone. That's our show at Shut Up MS Everywhere on Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook. No, YouTube. <laughs> it's a long show. <laughs> Facebook Twitch. for the social media. Um, YouTube. Spotify, Apple, where to listen. I think I'm just when I drop this, I'm just gonna say just buckle up. It's a two hour show. So the real the day one listeners will love it. A lot of people will just listen to like the 40 minute life recap and call that a day. So they get a full show too. So no matter what you like, you get a full show. That stuff's great. It's really entertaining. Thanks, I love listening to Evan's life. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> and after I talk is too. also elite. People love that shit. Yeah, we, we could do. We, maybe that's a niche. We went on so many, ta- we went on so many atten- uh, tangents and just like arguments for no reason. We just, it's just three buddies that like to talk sports. There's a, there's a lot of like, like in depth arguments and discussions in this one. But, anyways, cheers to episode 89. Cheers, episode 89. I definitely don't have any water and left, so I will not cheers. Officially being here. Fall is back. Fall sucks. Winter sucks. Michigan sucks. Dude. Holy shit, Alex. Get get a grip, dude. (laughs) Sorry. Long day at work, man. Okay? Sorry.